It's the Bob and Tom Show. He's coming for you. He's gonna get you. <laughs> Take the queen of man. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's gonna get you. Take the queen of man. <laughs> Late at night when the bars are closing, alcohol takes its toll, and the drinkers need their favorite vendor. A tasty treat of sausage splendor. <laughs> Little man behind the car, police can't catch him because he's way too smart. The smell of mustard and a big umbrella. Hot dog man's got the perfect cover. <laughs> he's coming for you. Out in the street, the hunters want to sample the beats. He can't help but relish the fact the footlong keeps you coming back. <laughs> Once you're feeling safe and cool, that's when the wiener man makes his move. <laughs> <laughs> you can't scream when your mouth is full. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's gonna get you. said was mummies. Hi, it's the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Joshua Arnold. Chick. He's at the I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. And you turn your car off, or is it still running in the parking lot? I, I huh? think it's off. Oh, okay. Here's Tom Griswold. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Just drove by a house. This guy's got, uh, this. Uh, they, they have um, like eight skeletons and they're carrying a casket. Oh, yeah. man. It's, I mean, God, that's so great. Yeah. It's a funeral home. I think it's going to be a big Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not so it a funeral promotion, home, yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. I guess that's probably the one place you don't, <laughs> you don't get a lot of Halloween stuff. <laughs> yeah, you might be, probably you might no. be confusing that with just yeah. a regular funeral home. Sorry about that, everybody. I, well, I I was I just uh, overjoyed by the of fact course, that someone's, it's Halloween. It's someone's gone that deep. I think people I are going crazy. My gosh. I was uh, driving home from the game yesterday, and there was the, some guy's got like a 40-foot skeleton in his front yard. Oh, there's a person by me that's got four of them like that. I mean, like, uh, how do you, do you have yeah. to have a crane? Well, what I want to know is where do you store that when it's not Halloween? Yeah, it's just so great that yeah. people are so enthusiastic about it. Coming up, we have a story about someone who's not enthusiastic about it. Oh, me? Uh, no, it's a priest. Uh, 
Yeah. No, it's someone. Yeah, that's right. What about the Lord, your Savior, whoever you worship <laughs> right. around Halloween? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah what, what do Buddhists do about it? I, that's I don't right. know. To have some fun for God's sake. Well, Buddhists act like they go to the movies. That's what Buddhists do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the great band, Here Come the Mummies. Boy, they're busy now. This is um, our season. Got this nice letter from Jack in Linden, Pennsylvania. Hey, Jack. He says, uh, thanks for introducing us to Here Come the Mummies. Friday was the fourth time I saw them. His okay. last name's not Mahogoff, is it? <laughs> Jack. Oh. Jack Mahogoff. It's going to be one of those days, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Jack's last name is not Mahogoff. And <laughs> now, that I, now that you've said what it might be, I'm not going to tell you what it is. He's just Jack from Linden, Pennsylvania. Hmm. And his wife's a big fan. Are you trying to tell me he doesn't uh, enjoy himself? Hey, hey, hey. Huh? That How seems uh, <laughs> cast any aspersions. It's presumptuous. Uh, coming up, we have lots of interesting things in the news. I can do this to myself? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Holy have, hell. For free. Uh, uh, for free. <laughs> um, oh, you know what I wanted to check? What do you got, but I haven't. I probably should do this off the air. Uh, how, how are the sh how the shoe in doing? Uh, two and six. Another less than robust week. We're limping into the halfway point of the season. What are we looking at? Uh, week eight, which used to be the halfway. Well, remember, point. if if um... seventeen and thirty-one. Yeah, but I kind of went rogue. Uh, I went two and six on. I went. I added like four games on Instagram on oh, Saturday. Okay. I went. I went nuts because you're you're taking on uh, Brad Graham. Yeah. Our winner. If you don't want to buy him a Bradshaw Terry Bradshaw jersey, I will. I, I feel bad. No, I said I would buy him a jersey if he if he beats you at the shoe in. Well, I'm sure he did. I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked. We'll check it out. I told him. It. I, he's a Pittsburgh Just go ahead Steelers and, fan. Yeah, let's figure it out either way. Don't, okay, we'll get to it. Don't. Get, uh, but if you'd like to be a big uh, winner, right now we're we're in uh, week seven. We have one more game. Is that correct? The tough evening? nuts, babe. Uh, yeah, tonight uh, Vikings host the Niners. Okay. The faithful. Did you the, pick that one? The 49er faithful. Um, I forget. I'll have to look. Because if you didn't, you could always <laughs> make up for lost revenue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. With a maybe, big, maybe I will. Maybe I'll look bet. at that later. And the horns show themselves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the devil comes in many forms, but most often it's time. <laughs> you can be part of uh, what will be week eight starting next Thursday. Log on to bobandtom.com slash contest. And just pick the winners. It's fun. You could win yourself the beautiful big green egg mini max. God, I walked by a place yesterday. They had three big green eggs mm. doing a nice brunch. Oh, three of them, huh? Three of them. Three, right no there, waiting. Right there out front. Yeah. You can make a green, big green omelet with yeah. three. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we also have another thing going on. I look right over there. I look right beyond Ace, dreaming about his car that still has the laundry bag as a rear window ace, i offered my car to you ace entering you, you the can, fourth month you of can repairs. drive my car i've got an extra car i've got a suburban you can drive it around it's uh, it's glorious orange insoles wow um he doesn't want to we, talk about no he doesn't we got a minute or two. my guy's coming over today he can look at your window <laughs> that's it have that happen yeah uh the, the orange insoles folks um they're not just about feet they're about kegerators. Look at that. It's a giant kegerator. We're giving that baby away. That would look great in your garage, in your basement. If you're married, if you're not, you can put it in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're married to a dipso. Then you, <laughs> she may allow it in the living room. Draw me a beer. It's time for <laughs> breakfast. Maybe she likes to get loaded. You don't know. God, I saw a guy. I went to a... NFL game yesterday, and uh, with uh, with my ten year old daughter, as we were leaving, I am not kidding. There was a guy who, interesting enough, was um, dressed as one of the players. Mm -hmm. um, you mean he had a jersey on? <laughs> no, no, he had uh, the whole thing. He had a. a it's very elaborate. Wait, but, but, a, do you have a helmet and pads and pants? <laughs> no, but he, he was dressed as a specific player. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Well, no, this you guy can't was just say that. <laughs> Come on. Tell me who it is. He was dressed as Gardner Minshew. Ah. Never heard of him. Had a, right. He had the he had a big fake mustache and a wig. Mm -hmm. Was he wearing number ten? Yeah, he was <laughs> essentially being held up by one of his friends, <laughs> by which I mean <laughs> carried out. Oh, of the game. I see. And I don't blame him. Drunk. He was almost as drunk as the referees. Uh, um, uh, we uh, we'll get to that. Coming you need up. to remember this, you you uh, you people who are just now getting into the NFL, Tom. I'll tell you this after. After 60 years, man and boy, watching the National Football <laughs> League, if if the referees say it's a penalty, it's a penalty. You can uh, bitch and moan and complain and scream, but it's not going to change anything. Sorry. I know. I'm just saying. 
Okay. Uh, I don't know that the TV networks are pretty much instructed not to discuss bad That's right. Bad yeah, it's calls. a whole big conspiracy. And uh, Gardner, <laughs> though, yesterday, the big news, uh, I saw it yesterday, too. He's, he does this shake when he scores a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. So great. Right, yeah. Did yeah. it twice. Was so cool. Like a stripper. <laughs> great. He shakes his... You do, your, his you, 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 do, you do your thing, Gardner Minshew. We may have a song, a little tribute coming up for that. And for what? The NFL. Really? Really? But uh, back to my larger point, um, Brad Graham of Erie, Pennsylvania, was our big winner. The S'more. Of week six. We call him the S'more. You know why we do that, Christy? Uh, because graham crackers are a very important part of a S'more. See? See what I get? I get respect. Way. I get a nice yes. answer. I get a correct <laughs> answer from Christy. I don't get some... Smart alecky thing? I was out and about uh, this weekend. And, uh, 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 out of I, your house? We had to... Uh, <laughs> I know, isn't that people, amazing? <laughs> we had people parking cars, and we also had a s'more station. That's right. Oh, that's really? awesome. Make uh, fantastic hot dogs, hamburgers, s'more. There's a lot going on, Tom. Oh, I know. Yeah. It was, it was I, big, I, I, big doings. Big weekend for me, too. A lot of... Uh, Went to a place that, if there's a pumpkin shortage, I know why. Why? Because they had 10,000 of them. <laughs> they had all of them. I had to go on a second pumpkin run. I don't have, I have two little pumpkins. I haven't bought pumpkins yet. I'm a little behind I have on about the holiday. 30. Bah, humbug. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it makes me feel good. Oh, if you're having a great pre-Thanksgiving, we're getting ready for it. We have a bunch of stuff coming up. Remember uh, that time you brought in a pumpkin to carve it in front of us, and I thought you were going to chop your whole hand off? He was whipping this knife around. You realize and this, uh, stabbed it. And, uh, oh, it was, it was, it was you terrifying. I won the um, media pumpkin carving championship several years in a row. Oh, well. That's, is that very a, nice. That's right. Is that a thing? That's right. Oh, it's been great. I don't <laughs> they, 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 that's it, was, it was at a beautiful hotel. It was great. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, that makes a big difference. It was the hotel yeah. that has the famous lobby that people jump off the balcony. Oh, I know which one you're talking oh, about. Splat right there in the lobby. Mm. Famous, famous, famous for it. Yeah. They, they didn't do it that day. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, Chick was good. apparently there for one of the flyers. No, they will. told me about it after. Never mind. <laughs> of the didn't they pick the, the guy up with take, a spatula? Well, the way what? you take a story and just coming up, we have pumpkins impaled on spires, among other things. Uh, mm -hmm. We have some pretty cool stuff. Chick, um, you mentioned hot dogs and hamburgers. So yeah, I, I guess what I'm having them tonight. Why? 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 A cooler just showed up in my house. Hi! That's from right. What, from from where? where? Omaha Steaks. Yay. I got home Friday, and there she was on my porch oh. in all its glory. What a beautiful, beautiful monstrosity that is. Oh, my gosh. Man. Fall in the air. I can't wait to do some fall grilling today. It's the perfect time. Omaha Steaks has all your fall cravings covered 50% off site-wide. That's right. It's their semi-annual sale. 50% off all your favorite tender, juicy, extra age steaks like those butchers cut filet mignons. Josh, were those in your cooler? Yes. Uh. Go to omahasteaks.com today. Use code BTS at checkout. You're going to get an extra 30 bucks off. That's Omaha Steaks. The possibilities are endless. Endless flavor, endless value, incredible entrees, scrumptious sides, decadent desserts. Did you get any of those, Joshua? I sure did. Oh. Those caramel apple tartlets that brown up so wonderfully in the oven. All of that 50% off during the semi-annual sale. And, as usual, every bite is backed by their 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. Tom, just to make you jealous, you know what else was in that cooler? Lasagna. Jumbo Franks. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say lasagna because I know it's the greatest. Yes, it is. That meat lover's lasagna is killer, but... Any, any time of year, by the way. That did well for sure, but particularly this time. Oh man, Frank's. Oh, man. nice I'm, I'm getting jumbo hungry. Franks. <laughs> Go to omahasteaks.com, shop all your delicious favorites for half the price. Don't forget to enter promo code BTS. That's BTS. You put that in at checkout, you're going to get an extra $30 off. Please hurry, though. This semi annual sale is only for a limited time. Minimum purchase may apply. Visit omahasteaks.com for details. I'll, you know what? I'm going to take some photos for all of you to enjoy of my. My, Thank my you. Grilling. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. An invitation would have been nice. Are you going to put na 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 underneath them? <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in the world of world records, we have something that... Uh, Shut up. Not worth a damn. <laughs> oh, it's great. If you're a golden retriever and you're listening, okay. don't go anywhere. And uh, <laughs> I'll give you a hint as to what's coming up in sports. Uh, you weren't the only one that, that snuck in to an NFL game yesterday. I'll have to explain that. Tell that story? Yeah, I'll tell it when yeah. we get back. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, 
a mess. Snuck in. You have tickets. I know, well, my well. iPhone crapped out, and in the in the in the world of electronic tickets, guess what can happen? I'll tell you next. This is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Bob and Tom, twenty four seven. This is, um, this is a wash, it's a face wash. It's called Soothing Licorice, so it's very gentle. It has very sensitive skin, he's told me, so. He does, no, that, yeah. won't, get, that won't get in his eyes and make his eyes. Well, I'll, this where, to, I'll make it a point. Is this where I quietly switch places with you, Brenda, and Pat doesn't know yes. I'm rubbing his face? I'm sorry, my hands yeah, no, no, that's not so Chip. dripping stuff. Chip, come touch my face, Chip. <laughs> okay. uh, and those aren't my hands, You're gonna start dripping uh, stuff? <laughs> Hot no. candle wax? What are you doing? No, is he going to be able to talk during this after you? He's falling asleep. What are you talking about? This is really nice. I mean, it's, this is probably one of the best things I've ever done. <laughs> We're all, gonna, we're all going to give you the mark of the mushroom. So right? much, <laughs> sounds good. So give me the room and helmet. His pants, it looks like he's aroused. I think it's just an illusion. No, it's a genie wing. I think it's uh... No, it's my quads. you got to remember, my quads are so big, everything sits atop the mountain. <laughs> That's right. Everything. everything. There's a uh, big mountain, small flag. <laughs> yeah, just like the moon. <laughs> Once again, the Pat McAfee uh, NFL kicker holder and punter. Okay. Hot towel. Okay. Hot towel. Hot towel. Hot towel. Hot towel. Hot towel. Hot oil. Oh, there it is now. Oh, now yeah. his face is covered except his nose and his. And his yeah, mouth. you never yeah, forget your first. I, <laughs> oh, no. How does that feel, Pat? You've not had a facial before? Well, it depends what kind you're talking about. Oh, is this I see. Wait a minute. Not what, are you guys, what, what are you guys what do you guys do on the road? Mm. None of your business. What goes on the road stays on the road. Mm -hmm. You've heard of squirting, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yup, there we go. Yeah. Oh, come on. I'm just saying. No, Tom hasn't. Uh, probably uh, not. Yeah. 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 Well, that doesn't certainly happen. No, no that can't possibly. <laughs> Quiet with the hands full. All I know my facials is eventually someone gets out cucumbers. Is that going to happen? Are we going to have any of They don't do that. Cucumber? I don't have. I'm not ready for that yet. No. Start with a uh, something smaller. Smaller, like a carrot. That's yeah, let's work our way up to the cucumber. Yeah. They're supposed to do at home. Start with the close their eyes and they yeah. show a cucumber over their eyelids. Yeah. Is this your bed here that I'm laying on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell of a table. Thank you. Really good table. Now, Brenda, uh, I know that you operate a legitimate so business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's I, I, nice I feel the need to mention this at this point. But um, do, do people ever come to you when you were oh, in, honey, in we the could early write days? <laughs> do, people, do people come in thinking they're going to get a happy ending? I'm getting a, no, a vigorous nod from Carrie. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. We seriously can tell you stories. It, in the early days when we first opened, you know, seven and a half years ago, mm -hmm. yes, we had the callers that we would get, you know, um, I'd like to get a male Brazilian. Okay, when would you like to schedule that? Would, well, do you hold it or do I hold it? Uh, and, and so my response would be, this is what you do at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, mm -hmm. Who knows what a love me? bug's gonna buy? For future reference. Right. Right. Come on. For, for, future, have, uh, hey, yeah. for future reference, the proper question is, is this a full service yeah. shop, yeah. right? That's yeah, the way that's we go about it. That's the way to do it, right? Full service. Yeah. Seriously, that's the code? Full service massage means happy ending. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's my massage therapist. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure that's probably much for the massage therapist. I mean, they get that. Uh, I think there's. I had a massage therapist several years ago that said that there are signals, like there's way guys fold their sheet and stuff when they when you leave the room and you come back in. Seriously, like. <laughs> what you know, I don't know, sheet, like, like, like a what is it in an coat. arrow? <laughs> 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 This where you like hit the arm and then uh, yeah. rub your hand across the chest. It's, it's like not the butt down. signal, no. but it's. Uh, I, I, I okay. would think they'd also do the, the famous towel trick, where you you walk in. No, through. see they're laying down. They're, they're laying, laying down. down. Oh, you can't walk, walk in. in anywhere. Walking in. With hey, I understand. <laughs> I paid for a massage. You missed one body part. Uh. <laughs> Police in Athole, Massachusetts. I'm Where? sorry. Uh, Where? Excuse me. We had to beep you there. Athole. Spell it. A T H O L. That's a thole. Is, no, I nope, think it's that hole. Isn't there? Isn't there? Uh, isn't there? Sports team, the Flames. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, they're the flaming assholes. Oh my god. <laughs> well, at least we're is that on. is oh, that actually? I, I need. What proof. do you mean? I need proof that that's a town. It is not the. It's the majors. Thank you. <laughs> the major, major athholes. Uh, oh, wait a second. I'm looking. Police in Athole, Massachusetts, have named a new canine police dog after New England Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski. Oh my god. It's a real place, Christy. 
population 11,584. That's a pretty big size. Uh, nice size town. Size town yeah. That's a big Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of big Ethels. <laughs> that sounds to me like Let's the big Ethel. Let's juveniles. get back to the sports mm. desk. That they've home. put those, you know, the fancy scroll work thing they put oh, on the sides. God. Yes, I'm not making this up. And they're like the big town and country vans. Well, I didn't want to die before, but now I really don't want to die. <laughs> it's really God, disturbing. I just had this discussion yesterday with one of my You're sons. You're going to be dead, honey. You won't know. I know, but the whole minivan thing. I The bumper stickers on that will be horrible. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. My orphan child is an honor student. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Uh -huh. okay. Scott Dunn, ladies. Hello. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. This has been Chick McGee speaking. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. I fixed it. I there fixed it. Oh, oh shoot. Ace Cosby. <laughs> Pretty genius. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. I don't know what was wrong with it, but I fixed it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. Now, uh, Patty G, we got a request for some music coming up. Okay. You got your uh, fingers all working over there? Yeah, sort of. I uh, got your uh, new hair hairdo that everyone seems to like. I yeah. love it. The votes are in. They like it very much. Uh, but before we get to sports, we were talking about this um, um, giving yourself a, what was it, a name if, in case you were a porn star or a stripper? Yeah. And there, there are two different formulas. You remember what they are, Josh? Yes, the porn star is the name of your first pet, followed by the street you grew up on, and mm -hmm. the stripper name is uh, the model of your car, your first car, and then the last thing that you put in your mouth. Yeah, that uh, Mustang coffee. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, Mustang <laughs> coffee. Yeah. That's good name. Wow. Uh, so we got we have uh, uh, variations on these uh, from our listeners. Uh, uh, some of these are really good. My porn name is Babette Pounds. That's a good one. That's that very good. good. Yeah. yeah. This one, now, the, the the car last thing in the mouth. You named a dog Babette? Uh, I didn't. My mother did. Uh, <laughs> all the other dogs are making fun of it? <laughs> yeah, they did. Hey, Babette. Uh, stripper. They stripper. thought she was a poodle. She really wasn't. Uh, so which one involves the automobile? The, the, the stripper, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, ra uh, uh, Ram Banana. <laughs> Ram banana. That sounds more like a, a, a porno name. You know, uh, there are several websites of women eating bananas. Are you serious? And women eating hot dogs. Clothed? Women eating corn dogs. Yeah. Uh, well, I would think they're in various sure. different porn sites. but or, or sites, I'm sorry, not necessarily porn. Mm -hmm. Ace, those banana sites are very appealing. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, Your thoughts, Ace? Your hilarious. Thoughts? Funny. Oh! Uh, you get it. You get the uh, the thumbs up from Ace. Howie. Um, some of these are really. They would really be good. Good. Uh, I think names. Flint Lefever. Oh, oh man, that, that is, that is that's good. Flint. That's nice. Yeah. What's a Flint? That must be the name of their dog. Flint. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good name for a dog. That's a dumb name for a dog. Remember the great movie In Like Flint. I thought that was James, that James, James Coburn. Coburn. Is that no, it was I a knock. It was a knockoff on In Like Flint, but it was called In Like Flint, right? And it was yeah. a knockoff of James Bond. It was yeah. trying to be, or Matt Helm, or yeah. one of them. Yeah. Cordoba Ding Dong. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I want a Ding Dong. Oh, those are so. That sounds good. like a correspondent for NPR. <laughs> ding Dongs haven't been the same. Since. That's ve that's, that's so funny. Very true. <laughs> I swear to God, there's one named Ping Pong. No. <laughs> yes. I I'm not kidding. We've gone Boy. from funny to uncomfortable <laughs> real quick. You, you sat here all morning. <laughs> Ding pong. Ding dong's. Uh, Look, you got Christy all overheated. Uh, Look at her. Uh, here's uh, this is a great. The uh, this is uh, someone with a dog named Ringo. Ringo Van Trees. <laughs> that sounds like a porn name. <laughs> she put sure Van does. Trees in her mouth. No, no, it's. Oh. I'm, we're doing both of them here. I'm sorry. This oh, is, that's good. That'll help. Van Trees is Dutch for forest, isn't it? 
Vin uh, trees. <laughs> say the forest for Vin trees. Where's the body buried? Over there in the Vin trees. Vin trees. Uh, 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 here's a good one. Ranger beef stick. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Ranger beef stick. I'll be sure <laughs> be it does, Doesn't that sound like a, that? Just sounds like a porn name to me. Hello, Mister Ranger, sir. Well, as does as, as does Bobo Washington. <laughs> So uh, th- 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 there's a guy that's well hung. I do like the name Bobo. There's Bobo. a wide receiver for uh, Seattle, Jake Bobo. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Christy and I always think, of course, of the great wrestler Bobo Brazil. Heck yeah, Bobo Brazil. Why, why are you dragging Christy? Stealing my it's, Monte Cristo because he stole my sandwich. Christy was doing a uh, was shooting a gig of some sort. You were Bobo that Brazil story? was there. I had oh god. I was running camera. Wow. Camera, camera, yes. yes. Wasn't it I had a to Monte run camera Cristo? on a wrestling event. What was it? A Monte Cristo sandwich? Yes, it was a Monte Cristo, <laughs> and you know how good those are. Is that with the mashed potatoes and the gravy? No, the Monte Cristo oh, is like, like a ham and cheese with powdered, powdered sugar. sugar. On it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> powdered what's sugar. The, uh, oh, they're so good. What's the mashed potato and the and the beef? Manhattan. Uh, That's it, a Manhattan. Is that is a beef it? Manhattan? Oh, I love those. They I want, are, a, I want a beef Manhattan and ding dongs for dessert. But after <laughs> yeah. the, and after the event, Bobo Brazil walked into the restaurant we were in and <laughs> literally walked by and said, "You're not going to eat all that," and took half my sandwich. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was Bobo hungry. He was wooing you. I think. <laughs> I don't know about that. I met Mr. Brazil. Uh, <laughs> oh, you did. I was ringside for a Bobo Brazil wrestling. Ah. Event. Do you remember his move? Uh, the cocoa, cocoa butt. butt. The cocoa butt. That's right. Here it comes. Yo. It's the cocoa butt. <laughs> Way before headbutting became a thing. In Clang. Um, yeah, he used his head. In that. Yeah. It wasn't, for some who wouldn't know, you might think he'd... He, Talking about his butt butt. Like, did like a... He can. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. booty butt. A butt like, bomb or something. Like a tree, Rikishi? <laughs> Rikishi. <laughs> he was a sumo guy. <laughs> yeah, he sure was. He can't give you change for five now, but still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about this one for a porn name? Spike Nordic. <laughs> Ooh, that might sound like a... I won't. Uh, that's, you got to do something with Nordic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Spike, uh, Nordic, can impale me. Spike, <laughs> Nordic. <laughs> Patches Greenfield. <laughs> That'd be a lady, wouldn't it? Patches? You think so? Yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> okay, it could, it's, it's a gender neutral name. Be a hobo, a, a hobo male stripper. Uh, <laughs> you know, some some dresses cowboys. Some oh, dresses. Yeah. Here's patches, He's fresh so off the, <laughs> the train car. Uh, dirty. Yeah, the people would like that. Look at him swing his bindle. Um, Chevette Coffee. That's a good stripper name. Um, the Chevette. Yeah, my we had we I grew up with one. No kidding. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Mustang Creamer. <laughs> Mustang Creamer. There's got to be an Anita Creamer out there. <laughs> something like that. Well, um, Max Creamer. Let's move forward here. We have um, a Chick McGee at the Bob and Tom Sports Desk. Lots of baseball going on, of course, well, NFL action. First of all, uh, this is for Christy. Yes. This gentleman calls this the devil onion, Devil's Onion Rings. You know what he's trying to say. What? About the rest of us, yeah. That were uh, anuses, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Christy, you were talking about people that have large skeletons in their yards. Yes. And Christy asked, where do you store them? I have a <laughs> T-Rex skeleton that's over 9 feet high and 12 feet long. It comes apart, but the box is very large and several of the pieces are pretty big. The pieces snap together, though, making it easy to put together. I put it in my garage. There wow. No problem, he says. Yeah, but you probably can't put a car in there. No problem at all. Well, Tom can't put them. Are you, is your garage packed? You can't put a car in there? Well, now he's got plenty of garages. He's good. I moved. I got got plenty of room now. Is that right? After not having a lot of room for a long time. Only a matter of time. (laughs) Wait till those girls start driving. Mm. Oh, God. Have you promised them? Uh, <laughs> I bet problem. they want a pink Barbie Jeep. That would be good. Well, I, the way I figure, right? the way things are going, uh, with any luck, I'll be dead by then and won't have to worry about it. <laughs> with <laughs> the way <laughs> things are going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. How was uh, the weekend? Was it brutal? I know that Saturdays and Sundays are brutal for well, you. Weren't they out of town? I was there. Might have been an airport run in there. We had a good Didn't time. Didn't you? Uh, oh, I bet there. You guys were happy to see. Yes, you. but there was an incident, correct? Oh well, the incident was yesterday. Yes. What, oh, what was that? I woke up and my I have a, a new iPhone. I've had it for about a month. Yeah. I woke up and all the apps, all the apps had turned black, <laughs> and I I don't know what happened. 
and then uh, interestingly enough, I have the you know you have that wallet on your iPhone. Sure. Well, um, everything on it was no good. Weird. No, no good. Um, all the credit cards, uh, everything was dead. And then I uh, went to an NFL game, and my tickets were on there. Did what? you just turn the phone off and turn it back on? Well, I you, tried uh, everything. I, mm. What did the ticket say when you went to the ticket? Well, you could read the ticket. Yeah. Here, I can I can pull it up for you. You can read. The, you can see the ticket. Mm-hmm. So you hear the credit cards, and you, you you go like this, and it says remove card. This card cannot be used. For all of them. But uh, yeah, my tickets are on there. Why did you and, pay and you can your see, bail? You can see the ticket right, right. there. See it? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah. But it says your pass is being activated. This has been going on for 24 hours. Hmm. So there are the tickets right there. Weird. So I, I went up, and the, it wouldn't work. So the guy said, "Well, you have to talk to the supervisor." So I went and talked to the supervisor. He goes, "You got to go down to the ticket office." Right. Go on down. So to I the said, "I've had these sa- the same seats forever since they opened." Yeah. And so I was heading to the ticket office, and I realized, wait a second, I'm I'm already in. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. So Finn and I just went door seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Make a good point. You're but already there. Every now and then, though, they get kind of snarky once you go. Get down to your, you have to show him your ticket. To oh, yeah, I had to show. Well, that guy didn't care. Because yeah. you can see the ticket. <laughs> oh, he knows you probably. That's you can see the ticket. It's right there. It just says it's not. A, I, who knows what happened? But my entire phone, everything went black. Hmm. So I've got to spend some time today getting it organized. It's scary. But so, less, lesson learned. Technically, you stu- uh, snuck into the game. Yeah, but yeah. Well, no, I paid for the tickets. Technically, <laughs> maybe. Um, th- they have my money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but lesson learned always have a backup credit card. Oh, you don't have one in your wallet? Wallet? I do. I'm oh, just saying. okay. Uh, but I, if you, if you if were counting on your just having your phone, and I don't know what happened to it. All I was doing was sleeping. My, hmm. so just be warned. Things can happen to this world. Of so now is it fixed? No, I've got to go get it looked at. Oh. <laughs> You might have to uh, er- erase all content and start over. Who knows? I hope you've uh, d- uh, downloaded. Back. Back up to the, yeah, yeah, the cloud. Yeah. You got yeah. all backed up? We're good. But it isn't. We'll, find, backed we'll, up on we'll, we'll figure it out. All right. All right. Here's as much information as I have about this situation. Don't all of you ask questions at once. Uh, one fan made it inside Lucas Oil Stadium, much like Tom did, without a ticket on Sunday. A statement from an organization called the Capital Improvement Board. Good morning, people. Uh, That's the public entity that oversees uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, where the Colts played the Browns yesterday. A baby was born at the venue during the Colts-Cleveland Browns game yesterday. My goodness. Uh, This is the official quote. We wish the family our warmest congratulations and wishes for good health. That's when there was an abortion on the field by the referees. Oh, my Lord. (laughs) You didn't expect that one, did you, Chick? No, I I didn't. You look surprised. It looked like you had been slapped with a hot mop. Man. I, this is probably one of life's most wonderful moments. This is a... Uh, uh, yeah. And you well, really... If you saw the game. I saw the game. Uh, clearly the referees yeah, had, yeah, had the Browns. Yeah, it's all the I know. Uh, the official response, we're excited to be a part of uh, the baby's history. Tom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what they name the baby? We also want to extend. Uh, uh, I don't know. Penalty. We also want to extend. <laughs> flag. Lucas, Thanks. if it's a boy. Thanks to our partners at IU Health for being prepared for any medical situation. They do a great job. Uh, it's a blessing. The Indianapolis native and former uh, Purdue Boilermaker wide receiver David Bell. Evidently, he's the uncle of the baby that was born. No kidding. Uh, we tried to. Uh, she, we thought she was going to have the baby before the game, but he <laughs> said, "Nope, it's all in God's time." And uh, so there you go. Now I have a new niece. So hopefully, I get to see her when I come back to the city. There you go. That's no, great. That's well, well, she was due on the twenty sixth, but uh, you know, babies babies don't care. Nope. Doing the twenty. Tom, the baby was. Baby was born, Tom. <laughs> That's a good thing. It's nice. <laughs> do they do the thing where they hold it up? They always do that gag where they show, they show the crowd and they <laughs> get people with, with the. I don't think they did that. Not the Lion oh, King. The Lion, the Lion King. King thing, yeah. Ooh. They also do a thing at stadiums now where they do the the look alike and oh, they put some fun. celebrity mm-hmm. up there. Sure. <laughs> I tell you what, there were a couple yesterday. I thought it was the person. I mean, they looked exactly the Whoa. same. Really? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just wondering, could they get sued for that if someone was 
What do you mean I look like that guy? I don't know. <laughs> this, they got to be careful. If it's less than complimentary? Orson Welles! <laughs> I don't the look elephant, like, man! I need to go on a diet. Oh, I'll speak Tom. I don't look like Uncle Fester. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. There are, I saw several thousand of those. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, there was a uh, Taylor Swift lookalike at the Chiefs game. Wait a minute. It was Taylor Swift. Oh. That's right. Your thoughts, Ace? They're not dating. Well, okay. they are now, I think. Uh, Taylor well, was spotted. At for... at the, uh, <laughs> they may not be going on a date. It ends in yeah. ING. Yeah. <laughs> they, um, yeah, that's not the verb you want. Date. <laughs> uh, she was sitting with uh, Brittany Mahomes. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. My man. That's his, uh, that's his wife. Uh, they, they had this little... Uh, they clap hand, you know how they have an elaborate oh, handshake. Yeah. Brittany and uh, Taylor had that going on. Oh, they did. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I know that because um, my daughter, when we got home from our game, ran into the living room to pop on the Kansas, Kansas City, City game. game. Is that right? Yeah, because our Uber driver informed us that Taylor was at the game. Ah. Uh, it says here. Good morning, LaShawn. And I'm always, I'm just, don't <laughs> yell at the messenger. <laughs> He's he's not going to be happy until he gets us thrown off the air. You're right. And then he'll wonder, <laughs> what happened? What, what? Uh -huh. what did I I'm just do? reporting the facts. Travis Gosh, and... why are you here teaching in Korea again? <laughs> why don't I tell you a little story? <laughs> Aren't you old? Story. Too old to be in the comedy club. First of all, uh, the baby was born. <laughs> Travis and uh, Taylor made their relationship public. It says here, with paparazzi catching glimpses of them in New York after their dates... And after their appearance on the season premiere of Saturday Night Live. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, this week well, she was at his been, house. And the next day he's at a game been, with his brother. You you have been, well, this week yeah, she was at been, his house. You've been saying all along, every day, they are not dating. In a month, so or, two, you're saying in a month are, or two, you're going gonna to look at me and say... Ace, man, you were right. No, I'm never going to say that, ever. <laughs> what, 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 ever. what rhymes with breaking up with Kelsey? <laughs> well, I don't know, she'll get some songs uh, out of it. Writing some lyrics. Well, dude, some of those elaborate touchdown dances uh, being done by, uh, the, the, uh, by the Chiefs, uh, that this might give Taylor some ideas yeah. for her shows in South America. Tom, you know who was at the, uh, the, the Colts-Browns game yesterday? Who? Browns great Bernie Kosar. No Is that right? That's exactly right. And he got his picture taken with Tay Tay. Look at that. Holy cow. There he is. Are they dating? Wow. Wait no. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was in Kansas City. Yeah. Oh, was that in Kansas City? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she I'm was sorry, at Kansas City. You're that right. was taken at uh, Travis's home. Well, Bernie was a in Brown. Why the hell was he in Kansas <laughs> City? <laughs> he should be in Indianapolis cheering his Browns on. Wow. Yeah, that's Bernie Kosar. Okay. Oh. Former Cleveland Brown quarterback. That's right. Um, More sports coming up. Go ahead, Tom. It's a funny story about why he got signed, which we can't tell. Uh, we have, um, oh, we have uh, now. <laughs> Here he goes again. <laughs> I got to tell you, we got some orange insole stuff right there in the studio, including that beautiful kegerator. We're giving it away. Bob and Tom dot com slash contest. Josh, what do you got going over there? Well, I've got good posture going on when I stand. I've got less knee pain, less back pain. Why? Orange insoles, that's right. It's spooky season, but you know what's really scary? Back, hip, and knee pain. Were you guys frightened? No. Oh, well, that's because you right? are also doing well. If yep. you work on your feet all day, you walk around with shoes that have that lame, thin liner inside, you're getting zero support, much like I do every morning, if you know what I mean. If you're standing all day, you're putting stress on your body. Go to orangeinsoles.com. Orange Insoles, they offer arch support. And I'm from St. Louis. I should know from arch support. Oh! Very good. They have that deep cup to properly support your heel, your feet, and thusly your entire body. If the insole in your current shoe flops around like a sad fish, you're not getting the support you require. Think of a table. If it wobbles, it's not having proper support, is it? 
Same with a house. If your house wobbles, my gosh, you've got issues. It's all about foundation, my friends. Head to orangeinsoles.com for free shipping, where your orange insoles come with a 60-day we-want-you-to-be-happy guarantee. Also at orangeinsoles.com, you can take their new quiz. It's all about your insole. You just answer a few questions. What are your symptoms? What shoes do you plan to wear with your orange insoles? What shoe size do you have? And you'll get recommendations guaranteed to work. Very simple and also no cutting required. Some of those insoles come in like a giant mat and you have to cut them out yourself. Not these. Orange insoles are true to size. Check them out for yourself. Orangeinsoles.com. Thank you very much, Josh. Coming up in sports, a little bit of baseball, a little bit of football. Coming up, nudity. Also uh, in the news, uh, Gronk and sex dolls. Not on the same story. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Re Yes, uh, Mark Marin and uh, and Rebecca Corey. Now, Rebecca, you mentioned that you travel mm -hmm. with uh, you travel with your dog. I do, mm -hmm. and you're yep. serious. You know. yeah. What kind of dog is it? I have a 64 pound pit bull, a mm -hmm. blue nosed pit bull. Oh. Her name it, is Angel, mm -hmm. and she was. Uh, you showed a picture us to us during the break. A picture of your dog sitting in the on the airplane, looking out the window. Yep, she was sitting in a seat next to me, looking out the window, thinking, "Whoa." And this is and this is a uh, what do you call it a service dog? A uh, therapy dog. Yep. Therapy dog. What does yeah. that mean? Uh, it means you just give up the Xanax and wine, and you go to a little being that makes you calm when you fly. I got an issue with flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you couldn't. Uh, so you're a cat person. You couldn't do that with cats because first of all, you know, cats. Well, are so, cats. Yeah, they're, they're so highfalutin. Cats, yeah. But yeah. not. Oh, you mean you have cats to earn the up. love of a cat, and that somehow makes it. No, less. the cat would right, you would you go. Take your Put, you put a cat on a plane and see what happens. I, I you know, I, I traveled. Uh -huh. I traveled with LaFonda. Oh, did you? And how'd it go? Was LaFonda in a cage? Well, let me understand. You got to understand. I'm the surprised cats... LaFonda would fly coach. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> Was she willing to? Uh... LaFonda. My cats were feral, so they're they're wild animals. Right. Now I had never traveled with this cat before, and and I be, it was crazy mm -hmm. because. They they were when I uh, first got them they were you know I, they were already wild mm -hmm. and they were only a few months old but they were wild so sure. in order to take Lafonda to, to Los Angeles it took me two hours to get her into the cage mm -hmm. I nice. had to wear leather gloves yeah. she st my my hands were still bleeding I'll okay bet. I get her into the cage I get to JFK and I'm exhausted and I'm aggravated, mm -hmm. and I put the cat on the, the, the conveyor, mm -hmm. and the TSA guy goes, oh, you're going to have to take the cat out of the cage <laughs> and walk it through. Oh, and yeah? I'm, and I, yeah, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I became crazy cat lady. See there my is hands? No way. Yeah, look at my hands. <laughs> and I made the biggest deal. I was like, there's no way this cat's getting out of that cage. And he's like, then you're not getting on the plane. Okay. And by this point, I'd frightened everyone around. Mm -hmm. I was crazy, and, and it would have been, they would have been less freaked out if I'd had a bomb. I mean, <laughs> I died. I took this little cat out of the cage, and they're like, step back, everyone back. And LaFonda was just freaked out. I'll bet. And I walked her through, and all she wanted to do was to get back into the box. But my biggest fear was that the cat's going to get away, and, and I'm going to be like in some... You're going to chase her down. Yeah, I'm, and I'm in a children's film. It's yeah. just a montage of me on the baggage claim. <laughs> you know, and it well, ends nice running through it kitchens, ends, down It ends with you in a federal facility yeah. being sodomized. Nothing yeah. more enjoyable. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, wow. Is that the sodomized bell? What yeah, the sodomized bell. There it is. What's nice about bell? bringing Angel on <laughs> yeah. is bully breeds are really gassy in general. If you know they? Anything. Oh, they're very gassy. And there's no hair there to muffle, yeah. you know, the smell and the sound. And so sometimes on the on the plane, she will just let, let, it, one out. let it rip. Yeah. And it's real nice. Do you, you know, look around and say, excuse me, or do you just point at the guy I, in front of you? <laughs> I, just, I just laugh because it's so unbearable. Uh -huh. But now there's someone, because normally you've been asleep on an airplane with your mouth open and been woken from a dead sleep because <laughs> You thought someone crapped on your face because you know what I mean. Yes. And now that I have a bully breed, yeah. I just go, well, there it is, everybody. Yeah. Take, that. Uh -huh. Take that. Take that. You, you need to give your dog Beano before you fly. What's that? I need to give it's me Beano before you, I fly. Yeah, it's the anti, same stuff uh, you put on your food, and it, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, prevents gas. Isn't there something really? magic on planes okay. that just you know uh, that <laughs> gas just evaporates? I always thought there it was a magic to it. Well, it doesn't. It actually makes it all the way to the back. Yeah, it does. It makes it to that sleeping person with their mouth open. Are you the guy that just? Are you the guy? The guy that, uh, are, you, are you the guy that pulls the SBD that reaches up and turns off that fan thing? <laughs> it, it, I just think it, 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 it works its way the entire length of the plane. Well, it does. Everybody have their best. 
Hey, it's Josh, and of course... Hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom and Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Big Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. <laughs> Is that where you go? Are we eligible? I had a moment where uh, my girlfriend thought she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you know, ladies, if you're uh, if you suspect that you're pregnant, tell the guy during the day, don't wait until you're about to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. No, you know, because that's what she did. She's like, I have a cramp. I'm like, oh, I might be pregnant. Good night. Huh? I'm like, no, <laughs> night. I don't think so. I go, well, well let's find out. Well, what are you going to do? So I, you know, I'll butt to Walmart yep. and um, <laughs> got, a test. got yeah. myself a little test. Doctor yeah, in a stick. box. Two, yeah, I know. two o'clock well. in the morning and of all the times to get recognized. You uh -huh. know, I walk into Walmart in the night shift. <laughs> hey, yeah, fluffy. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> what do you need? A miracle. <laughs> and so, so, All right, here's some tickets to a Grateful Dead concert. Right? All right. <laughs> so I found the aisle where they sell the pregnancy test, and I realized something. Walmart has figured out the evolution of how life works, and yeah. they put it in aisle four. As soon as you turn the corner, you see condoms. Uh -huh. Then you see lubricant. The next to the lubricant, you see pregnancy tests. The next to that, you see pampers. Next to that, formula. Oh, and yeah. at the end of the aisle, they sell beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle. <laughs>
Yeah, and then, and then of course there's Cordoba Ding Dong. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we had we have uh, the the boys in the next room. I can see them in there. Uh, perhaps a little bit of information about the NFL before we get to our special NFL treat. Well, in song. Uh, Major League Baseball first. Nathan Navaldi remains perfect. Mitch Garver. <laughs> Mitch Garver, Dale, prostitute. Dale, Dale. And Jonah Heim homered. And Adolis, Adolis Garcia helped the Rangers avoid elimination yesterday in Houston. 9 2 win over the Astros. Game seven tonight. Wow. In Houston. And Max Scherzer is going to try it again for the Rangers. Okay. He's going out there. I, uh, good. Good luck, Christian Javier going for the uh, the Astros. And uh, also, Phillies try to clinch their second straight trip to the World Series. They're up three games, two, game six this afternoon in Philadelphia uh, against the Diamondbacks. So that brings us to the National Football League. Oh, hang on. There it is. Uh, Jalen Hurts throws for 279 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, and the Eagles, 31-17 winners over the Dolphins last night in Philadelphia. Patrick Mahomes. My man. 424 yards, four touchdowns. Travis Kelsey caught 12, 179 yards and a touchdown. The Chiefs beat the Chargers 31-17. And also yesterday in Indianapolis, the Cleveland Browns over the Colts 39-38. I think it uh, is not overstating it. A controversial ending there. No matter who you're rooting for, uh, you're a little happier, obviously, if you're a Browns fan. But uh, that was the final score. Every play up. There's nothing we can do about it now. Well, um, uh, and, and except sing Gardner Minshew's praise. And, yes. And Gardner Minshew had a couple of touchdowns. When he, when he, in the end zone, he has kind of this move that he does. I bet you'd never seen that. Look, looks at the crowd and kind of does the. The shakes the shakes his uh, shoulders. Bit of a shimmy. shimmy? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So uh, we have, do we have a tribute over there? We do indeed. Stop me up over there, Tom. Okay. Now Get this the uh, band rolling. Okay. I should point out this is um, uh, the former Mick Jaguar. So we've got we've got another musician, and you you're going to play something. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. One, two, three, four. Woo! All right, everybody. Is that by Nike? No. Just me. <laughs> Quite the production. He's the coach, quarterback, leading the attack. God don't mention. <laughs> Walks out in the locker room. His mustache is like a broom. Girls wanna kiss, yeah. Everybody sing along if you want. God not mention you Does a nice head fake Then the end zone shimmy shake God not mention you Oh, he's got them on a drive To keep the cults alive God not mention you Here we go One, two. <laughs> hey, you used to live in a hippie van. I saw it on Instagram. We're all dying to meet you. There's nothing you can do when the referees beat you. God, no mention. <laughs> oh, it's true. Sad but true. God, no mention. Do it one more time with it. Feels good. Gardner Minshew. Oh, yeah. Very nice. The Gardner Minshew song. Thank you very much, yeah. though. Uh, that's, that's Got Dean on bass. Beautiful <laughs> thing. Thank you, Archie Dean on the bass. Very good, very good. That drums uh, and the whole thing. Oh, it's yeah. great. Uh, wow, very, very what a production. It's a no. phantom production. Phantom production. We have our, uh, our, uh, <laughs> our uh, contest out there. Every week, we give away the big green uh, egg mini mix. <laughs> <laughs> Distraction. Um, the big green egg mini max. Pig skin pick 'em, Tom. The pig skin pick 'em competition. Uh, you have to uh, just go on uh, to online to bobandtom.com/slash contest. 
By the way, why did they don't forget? Don't forget the orange insoles. Oh, the orange insoles. Kegerator. We're giving that away. Uh, each week, however, we give away the Big Green Egg Mini Max, as I mentioned. Our winner um, from week six was Brad Graham. We call him S'more. 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 Um, and he, he and Chick have a little bet who is going to do best on the shoe in. So we'll see how it comes. That I promise him if he beats the well, Chickster, I th I think we he gets a Terry Bradshaw throwback jersey. I can't imagine he didn't do better than I did, but uh, I picked more games and. We should go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, we'll see. I think I we'd look the, a little I've Grinchish. Got the, the roster uh, right here. Okay. Uh, but we'll we'll review that. If you'd like to be in on Game Seven, excuse me, on Week Seven, hmm. just I'm thinking of the World Series. If you want to be in on uh, on Week Seven, go to BobandTom.com/contest. Just pick the winners. It's that simple. And uh, you could uh, win yourself the Big Green Egg Mini Max. We just wrapped up. We'll wrap up Week Seven tonight. Week Eight starts Thursday. Yeah, it's very confusing. Um, you, no. you are correct. Uh, we are in week seven. One more game. I don't. I don't know that the weeks matter as much as I don't think the fact does. that there's a contest yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah, just I just it's. it's yeah, we trim three because... minutes off each time you did this. If you didn't did you mention the weeks, it's a long show. Jim. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll explain. I'll explain how I'll explain how plugs work to you uh, during the break. We're coming right back with uh, more sports. A great world record. If you're a golden retriever, do not stop listening to this show. We've got some. Oh. Work. We're number one among golden retrievers. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the Bob and Tom Show on Facebook. Get the link at. BobandTom.com. I'm actually in love right now. My boyfriend and I are walking around town in a two-headed Snuggie. <laughs> um, it's getting pretty intense. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I'm so you know, because I, I have a hard time listening to the, the love, you know, love songs with Delilah. Where are you calling from tonight? Uh. Where are you? What's going on with you tonight? What's your name? <laughs> Requests and dedications. Hi, Amy, calling in from Tustin, Arizona. What's going on with you tonight? <laughs> you and Matt broke up. That's hard. What do you want to say to Matt tonight? <laughs> we'll play that for you. That's Penny Lover by Lionel Richie. Penny Lover. Oh, oh you know what? I've had enough. That's, I, that's it. I'm, I'm in love with I her. remember that very well. Maria, that is... Uh, for, those that, <laughs> for those that get that, yes. oh, and for those that don't, you should listen to Delilah just so you do. Just that yeah. one Just time. So get so the joke. They should have those songs. Aren't good. they're not good for people's mental health? Like they should have little footnotes at the end of every verse. You know, I would cross an ocean for you if that ocean led to an English-speaking country. Because at this point in my life, it'd be really difficult to learn a second language fluently. Not to mention the anti-American sentiment. But we'd have to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wow, you are quite the literalist, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Baby, I would die for you if I were already dying and you just needed my giblets. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Bamford is our guest. She's not kidding. She oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. Oh. oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? My back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look. Nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All See you right. later, buddy. Give it a... oh. Yippee! Ba -da -ba -da -da -ha -ha. I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See me. you later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. Here in the Bob and Tom program. We have been asking you for uh, questions you get all the time. About you your job? Yeah. Dear Bob and Tom, I work at the service desk of Automotive. Uh -huh. Customers call in and say, hey, the check engine light came on. What's wrong with my car? Ah, well, there you go. I want to always say, I don't know, put your car on the phone. Let me talk to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. Dear Bob and Tom, my name is James Brown. I'm <laughs> really getting tired of people saying so. Do you feel good? <laughs> <laughs> yep, Dear Bob and Tom, uh -huh. my name is Brandy. 
Yes, I am I'm sick of people bit. asking me if <laughs> I am a, a fine, fine girl. girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. If you've got questions you're tired of, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, yep. Okay, that's one of my favorite songs. I love that song. Oh, Brandy? Yes. Brandy, you're a fine girl? Yes. What a I'll good wife it. you would be. Yes. But my love, my uh, life. But, is, and my love of my lady is, is the sea. Yeah. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Now, why do you like that song? Because is know. that the kind of relationship you want where that's some or the man <laughs> who loves you but he has to leave for a long Right. He comes in, gets the good loving, and, and then he leaves you alone for a month at a time. <laughs> it's, a lo- it's a great way to keep a, a yeah. relationship yeah. together. Here it, is. Here it is, kids. Yeah. You say it happened. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Nice guitar. Yeah. Come on, Christy, sing along. Really well. A hundred ships a day, lonely sailors <laughs> pass the time away and talk about their homes. Come on, everybody. There's a girl <laughs> in a warm town, and she works laying, laying, laying whiskey down. down. To say brandy, fetching all around. She serves them whiskey and wine. On the so side, she says brandy. <laughs> All right, thank you very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do you think Brandy? Hey. How do you think Brandy got to own the bar? <laughs> she wears a braided chain made of the finest Fine silver oh, from the north of Spain. Oh, I uh, lock it. That bears yes. the, the name, name of uh-huh. the man and that the Brandy, Brandy loves. loves. She uh-huh. killed and buried out behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll tell you why. Why is that? Because I like doing illegal stuff. Ah. That's right. Yeah, I don't I don't want to go into a store. I want to deal with the drug dealer. I want to go to the bad part of the town. I want to do that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't want to have to. I, and the people say, oh, we just want it for medicinal purposes. No, you don't. <laughs> no, oh, because oh, the, the, then they pour, bring out the, 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 guy, the 90-year-old guy with the tubes coming out of him talking about, oh, I'm only happy when I'm high. Well, Welcome to America. <laughs> we're all only happy when we're high. I'm telling you guys right now, you see somebody walking down the street, not high and happy, run for your damn life. <laughs> that guy's a lunatic. Yeah. He's got a basement full of bodies. And you're next, pal. That's what I tell you. Joining us in the studio, comedian Larry Reeb. No, well, Larry, you are from... Chicago. Mm-hmm. You, you just got a great Chicago yeah. accent. Well, it's a, originally I'm from a little town, Dwight, Illinois. It's a farm town. Uh-huh. There's a mental institution and a women's prison there. Really? And my parents met. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I live in Chicago. Are you married? Are you I've been married 10 years. Oh, how's really? it going? Good. I think us guys need good women, don't you? Women oh, yeah. keep us in line. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's why most axe murderers are single. <laughs> If they were married, their wife wouldn't put up with that. Put that axe down. You're not chopping anybody. You have to take the garbage out. Take the ski mask off. It's summer, you idiot. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, Chick. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Enjoyed your tribute to the great Gardner Minshew. Oh, thanks, Tom. He's got that uh, that shoulder shimmy when he uh, gets the scores those touchdowns. <laughs> it was very nice. Uh, now it's a stripper move. Yeah, uh, we have um, shaking your um, <laughs> uh, friend of the show. Shake it, Nate Bargatze. Shake for me, girl. Nate Bargatze and the Foo Fighters Saturday Night Live this week. They're yeah, good. they're both good. Yeah. Nate, very good. Uh, old friend of this show. Looking forward to seeing him. Have you seen online Rick Astley? Uh, is uh, evidently become pretty good friends with Dave Grohl, and he has a whole section of Foo Fighters songs he does. Uh, oh, really? He, his version of Everlong's great. It's uh, it's pretty funny. You know, you wouldn't think Rick Astley. Oh, no, I, 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 I always liked I, I always liked the Rick Astley. He's got that in, an interesting voice, doesn't he? He doesn't mm-hmm. look like he matches his voice. Exactly. Right? His right you're, you're very correct. I like it too. 
I, do people, that song is like, I became ironically. Never want to give you up. Yep. But it's like good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, catchy. I, sure. see him, I see him and I immediately think red haired punk. Is <laughs> my, I'm, I must be the only one. I'm, I, I'm, no one thinks like me, I'm sure. Uh, well, now uh, we return to the sports page. Have we missed anything? Where are we here? Let me look. Uh, let's see. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, we got that. Uh, also, the baby was born at Lucas Oil. We covered that. Georgia extended their streak of number one rankings in the AP College football poll to 19 straight weeks. Number nine, Alabama moves back into the top ten. Um, Michigan at number two. Um, let's see. USC's out. There's your college football update. Thank you. Uh, and- <laughs> I I wasn't ready for all this. Oh, you know, that's okay. I, I, I thought we had a, a fun world record that was uh, primarily for Golden Retrievers. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, we could touch on this, is getting his own college football game. Really? Not only, not just any game. It's going to be a bowl game. You heard me. The Los Angeles Bowl, the L.A. Bowl, announced that Mr. Gronkowski signed a multi-year agreement to partner with the college football postseason game. Titled the L.A. Bowl, hosted by Gronk will take place at SoFi Stadium on December 16th and match teams from the Mountain West and the Pac-12 conferences. Christy, I had an L.A. Bowl Saturday morning. Uh, yeah? Egg whites, uh, kale, spinach, oh, nice. some avocado. Yeah, Willie had one. I think it was just pot. <laughs> 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 a little pot? <laughs> and a bong that looked like a Dodger hat. The oh. former uh, Gronkowski... <laughs> L.A. Bowl. <laughs> uh, the tight end replaces Jimmy Kimmel as that game's host. Oh, okay. I didn't know Jimmy Kimmel I hosted a I, I was, game. I was aware of last it, two years. Yeah, I didn't oh. uh, really. I okay. Really didn't care, but uh, evidently <laughs> Gronk's going to host it now. Okay, they'll instead of the teleprompter, they'll have pictures on it. Those, those words can't they come too uh. fast? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He wanted to call it the four twenty sixty nine bowl, oh, but yeah. they said no. That's <laughs> the lesser. Uh, Bowl. I'm not sure that Gronk, Gronk could organize a bowl of Cheerios on his own. Um, Mount, Mountain West obviously still has two. Pac-12 only has two teams left, I think, so they better hurry <laughs> to get down. And it's been... It's been... One week. <laughs> um, the Super Bowl of Electric Utility Professions. <laughs> I knew he'd hate this. Over a 1,000 electric cowboys participated in the 39th annual International Lineman's Rodeo. <laughs> these, these men and women are badasses. Hell yeah, they are. I do like the lineman for the county. Man, that's a good they're song. Dang, they're Uncle dangling. Uncle Joe on, is a lineman. They're dangling on poles. And yeah. Know, this is a tough gig. That's on brand. The competition sees line workers participating in events such as climbing a 40-foot wooden pole and rescuing a 6-foot, 1-inch 165-pound mannequin named Rodeo Joe. Wow. In another event, competitors must carry an egg in a bag <laughs> during a timed pole climb, then descend it with it in their mouths without cracking the egg. Ah, this sounds kind of like a fraternity, you know, like a pledge stunt. Except that a frat, the egg would have to be in their ass on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a Fiji. <laughs> now eat the egg. <laughs> there we go. I'm not a big frat fan either. Don't get me wrong. But did, did a frat guy bully you at one point? <laughs> oh, beat up. You feel no, less. There, just, there, was, there was a frat. Well, there was one, on. there was one very unfortunate stunt. Go on. I won't go into it. The guy plummeted to his death, but um, <laughs> the one where they had to they had to put the uh, marshmallows in their ass, run up the steps of Hamilton Hall, and if you dropped it, you had to eat it. Now is that I, uh, I did not participate. Is that Alexander Hamilton Hall? Yes, exactly. Wow. Very Ooh. impressive. Uh, oh, Man, have you seen Hamilton, Tom? Man, I love that show. Oh. I've seen it three times. Yeah. Love I've seen it. it twice. I'd go see it again, by gosh. Darn Josh, your thoughts? Was. Oh, no, I uh, I haven't s- sipped from the Kool-Aid, if you will. Neither have I, Josh. I'm with you, buddy. I did. I caught like five minutes of it, and I went, oh, yeah, okay, not not for me. I want to be in the room where it happens, Chick. I didn't like it. <laughs> Loved it. One second of what I saw. <laughs> King, the King song and then the reprise. Oh, it's delicious. That's, that's, oh. It's okay. It's now, not, let's get back to this. Not for me, and uh, uh, let's get back to this. Now, what's your main uh, objection? Well, of course. There are no zombies in it. That's it. Well, there's that. Whoa! <laughs> but 
But I don't know. Uh, I think the uh, it's, it's a gross reconstruction of history. Hamilton was a white man <laughs> from the Caribbean. I don't know why we have to. <laughs> Has anybody uh, dared <laughs> protest that, like outside one of the showings? Uh, uh, casting has <laughs> casting has become. Casting has become gender neutral and a big sign. I mean, did you see White, um, whites only? <laughs> yeah, like no, well, didn't you see Meryl Streep's going to be Mandela in a no, new movie? I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's how good she is. Um, so let's get back to this rodeo. According to the Wall Street Journal, over 1,300 journeymen and apprentice line workers took part in this year's event to make up teams from the U.S., Canada, and Brazil. Oh. They have electricity in Brazil. Did you know that? Oh, I was not aware. Of that. Uh, the, the most <laughs> the most difficult thing is more like a rodeo. They have to grab a, a line with a very strong current running through it, <laughs> and if you can hold on to it for eight seconds, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of a lot of serious burns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and try to ride a bull. Yeah. Yeah. Ride, ride that lightning. Yeah. 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 Am I right? It's the amperage that kills you, not the voltage. It's something. Like and from that. what I understand, if you are holding it on, holding on to it for eight seconds, you're never letting go. Isn't that one of the problems? Is that you? Yeah. You can't, can't physically yeah. let go. Yeah. Your muscles yeah. Uh, yeah. flex. And, okay. Yeah. Yikes. The lineman rodeo sounds like fun. Okay. Uh, what's coming up in sports? Uh, we've got a world record. If you'd like to, uh, I don't ready. see the golden retriever. Is that we have time? Uh, no, it's area? the um, record is if you. World a teenager has broken the Guinness World Record for the highest catch of a tennis ball. Thus, the Golden Retriever. With the help of a friend piloting a drone, Cameron Heining cost, uh, caught a tennis ball from a height of 469 feet, five, uh, five, 469 and a half feet, oh. a, a blip, beating the previous record of 75.4 feet. Uh, I'll say. I guess. Yeah. Uh, he was required to catch the ball with his bare hands. Said it did not hurt more than really hard high five. <laughs> Couldn't have been easy. I don't see anything about golden retrievers in this. Well, story. I'm just well, saying. I, I think, think I, I think we, I think we should try this with golden retrievers. because oh. <laughs> they can catch a tennis ball. Did you see the uh, security dog who was retiring after like 25 years of service? 25. And he was a uh, he was a drug sniffing dog at the airport, and he they had one last. Um, uh, piece of luggage for him to. He went over and sniffed it. And of course, they sit down when they smell something, and then they release tennis balls from overhead and oh. and all over the. Oh. He was like so happy. Oh. Oh. That's very sweet. Very, very cool. Yeah. Well, the, 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 this kid caught a tennis ball in his bare hands. Yikes! Kind of fun. I would. I would have thought the record would have been like three thousand feet or something. <laughs> Didn't Gronk catch a football from like yeah, uh, a helicopter, you know, five hundred feet in the air or yeah. something like that? Yeah. What do you mean a tennis ball? Let's try this with a bowling ball, and then we're talking record. <laughs> there's what do you think, also Josh? these uh, fifteen twenty feet before it kills you. There's a series of videos where a guy owns a former drug sniffing dog, and he said, "I'm going to have fun with my drug sniffing dog today." And, she, and the German Shepherd's sitting there looking at him, and he goes, "Okay." This morning, uh, we're going to have to go to the grocery store, and we're going to get some milk and eggs and some uh, ham and cocaine. And the dog goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? And then the guy goes, just kidding. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Dog knows the word cocaine, Tom. Uh, okay. well, and, uh, yeah, that seems like an easy record to break, this one. It like, can't be easy to catch the tennis ball like that. I don't think like you that. know how high that... High in 400 and how was 469 that, and a half. That's a lot. Yeah. That's, that's. I saw some hippie do this. Stories. I saw some hippie do this with his dog on a beach once in a van. Yeah. He put, he put down his hacky sack. Hey, dude. <laughs> what? That was a high record? Is that what we're uh, Oh, no, no, that's different. Okay. Uh, <laughs> coming up in sports, what else have you got? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you had the poor guy sifting through papers looking for the words golden and retriever. <laughs> never, never found them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Christy picked up right wanted, away. I You've just got a tennis. Do... What, I, what I kind of tennis ball to... record doesn't involve a golden retriever I, I or Serena Williams? This one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> I just had one. I wonder if there is a dog record. Thanks, Tom. A world record for dogs? The longest do the longest tennis ball caught on a fly by a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's some halftime show. Uh, that would be great to see. Oh, the Frisbee dog. Oh, I love man, the Frisbee man. dog. Um, um, this portion of the Bob and Tom show is uh, brought to you by something delicious and tasty, and I'm, oh, I yeah. can't wait to get some this fall. What am I talking about, Josh? 
Well, thank you for calling me delicious and tasty. I appreciated that. You know what else is delicious and tasty? What? Omaha Steaks. Yes. That's right. It's the fall, fall leaves, sweater weather, and fall grilling. Oh, you've got tailgating. You've got that urge to enjoy some co cozy comfort food. Omaha Steaks has all your fall cravings covered with 50% off site-wide. That's right. It's their semi-annual sale. That's 50% off all your favorite tender, juicy, extra-aged steaks like those butcher's cut filet mignons. That's right. Go to omahasteaks.com today. Use promo code BTS at checkout to get an extra $30 off your order. With Omaha Steaks, the possibilities are simply endless. Endless flavor, endless value, incredible entrees, scrumptious sides, decadent desserts, and so much more. All of them 50% off. That's right, the semi-annual sale. And every bite is backed by their 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. Go to omahasteaks.com, shop all your delicious favorites, like those jumbo franks. Don't you dare call them hot dogs. They are far superior to any other frank out there. And they're half the price. Enter promo code BTS at checkout for an extra $30 off. But hurry, the semi-annual sale is only for a limited time. Minimum purchase may apply, but hey, that's not going to be uh, a factor. No. You're going to want all of it. Visit omahasteaks.com for details. And a special Bob and Tom tag. Don't forget the lasagna. You hear me on this? You're going to thank me. I Here. do have some dog records. Oh, okay. The highest jump by a dog. We have. Oh. The, we remember this: the golden retriever with the most tennis balls in his mouth. <laughs> oh, look at that guy! That's that, the best. That's a world record. We have a couple more that you might be interested and in. And coming up, are other women bitchy to other women? Well, <laughs> we, we have we have statistical Where proof. Where have you been? <laughs> well, when you hear this, it's all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening to Bob. There's a monkey here riding a dog. <laughs> yes, there is. Hi. And the monkey's name is... Where's uh, the camera? Dawn. Okay, Dawn the monkey. Dawn the monkey and Dan the dog, right? And uh, wow. the dog's name is That's Dan. Dan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the... Um, the doggy has a little saddle. Oh, look at that. And the, <laughs> and the monkey's you know, riding around uh, our at studio. At first glance, it doesn't appear as though the monkey has any control over where the dog, where the dog goes. Quite clear. Is the, is the monkey steering? The I dog? don't think the monkey is steering. Um, He's got he reins. He does have yeah. reins. Can I put my hand out? Will the monkey bite my finger? Or? Don't uh -huh. you dare spit in my pop, monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, this Look at that so little sweet. guy. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. oh, my God. She's drinking from James's glass. James, uh, I hope that's not a Jaeger bomb, James. <laughs> no, this, this, is the, this, is the, this is the white Russian right here. Oh, okay. I don't care who you are. That's fracking Adora. <laughs> she wants the chocolate. He had hot chocolate. She's trying to oh, get the chocolate. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead I told Jeannie, thanks, that's sweet. Cool. She'll like oh, anything thank sweet. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, that, oh, yeah. that really, she likes oh, that. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. And you want me to tell you something? Yeah, this is never been done. I've never ever turned her loose. I mean, I've always. Oh, you the know, first what? time I've ever turned her loose. Because she has the strength of ten. Well, it's not that. You know, I just a little. Uh, she's relaxed and. Uh -huh. We could tell. In order. Yeah. Did you see uh, what in a she minute, did, she's gonna be drunk. Did you see what she did? She stuck her head in there, couldn't get the chocolate. Now she's using her hand to get down to the bottom. Dipping of it out. Yeah, she's, her hand out. Yeah. She's no idiot. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, James, do you have a smoke? She might want I one of those next. We'll need smoke, definitely. As if this could get any better. If the monkey would smoke a cigarette. Light one up. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. But do they have, a like, a pre... Uh, 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 how do I know where this Race, delicately? Uh, if, performance. They're, if they're going to... Uh, if they're going to defecate, do you know, or do they just like let it rip? Yeah, and they come over, and come over and <laughs> ring a bell, and because uh, uh, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, I got say, squelched about her playing with herself I know. Yeah. on defecation. How does uh, that work? How does that work? <laughs> okay, I think uh, she's going back over to see Chris. I had to go. I had to go. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Let's please go. leave a monkey turd over. No, if you please. could, could you please, please defecate on his keyboard? Turn my headphones off. Please, please. That would. 
stop the show. But uh -huh. Just a little one. <laughs> Just a little baby rabbit. <laughs> Have you got uh, food over there, Tom? Would you like? No, I've got iced tea. Oh yeah. Well, she. Um, hi. How are you, sweetie? You are just a, the cutest little thing. Don't walk on my oop. That oh, oh, we do have a banana if we oh, want my to bring it in. just went off. Oh God. Bring a banana in. See if she'll eat it. Oh yeah, she'll eat a banana. She'll eat a banana. She'll eat the hell out of a banana. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Wow. She's like a monkey on a football. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Chick McGee here from the Bob and Tom Show. I want to tell you about the NFL season coming up. We got together with the folks at Big Green Egg, and each and every week, you're going to have a chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg during the Pigskin Pick'em program on the Bob and Tom Show. Occasionally, I will I will sing in my stand-up act if I'm talking about a particular band thing. Like right now, I have you know I, I kind of talk about the fact that uh, you know Grunt uh, STP is getting back together. You know Scott Weiland. Yeah, sure. So I kind of do a, a mild dancing impersonation of him to prove that you know you could you have to be on heroin to dance like that. And and mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that he's actually our generation's Keith Richards. If you've noticed, yeah, he nothing true. will kill him. He's getting yeah. he'd been kicked out of two bands because they thought he was going to die, and then yeah. he didn't die. Right. He didn't die. He's still alive. And I hear him. I hear him. And they're like, hey, okay, whatever. Well, let's. Record another album. Who cares? Um, I like their music. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we can all agree that uh, that grunge is the one good thing that AIDS gave us. Mm. I think you can pretty much <laughs> argue that. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. really, nothing explains the biggest left turn in the history of music like AIDS. <laughs> because it literally was like one week we were like, don't want nothing but a good time. AIDS. I seem to recognize. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> AIDS me. <laughs> you tell a generation of 13 year olds that sex equals death, you're going to have them going, I deny him. <laughs>
with a little bit of chocolate and then... Um, that sounds familiar. Uh, tiny, tiny uh, marshmallows. marshmallows. Yeah. Was, huh. it any, was it any good? Uh, I preferred just the plain golden grams, but... Um, yeah, you know, for a fat kid, it was pretty uh, awesome. <laughs> S'mores for breakfast? <laughs> Isn't that, uh, you know, aren't Golden Grahams like crack or something? I mean, people they'll, they'll go crazy for those. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a, I, I, yeah, I love them. I, love them too. I can't have a box of my Are house. they selling the dusting? I, th I thought they had were selling for like a ice cream topping or I something. I believe oh, the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. No, we had a story. Do you remember the cereal story we had? I think it was on Friday. Oh, that's right. Christy Tom was very ah, I excited. Missed that. Oh, you missed it? If you had well, to guess, I wasn't here Friday, remember? If you had to guess what cereal would excite Tom uh, a lot, what would you guess? Raisin bran. Close. You're close. Keep guessing. Um, Shredded wheat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the story. Uh, this is fascinating to me. Um, he's the, fascinating. He's 107 years old. Um, his name is Mr. Leonard Howes. Yes. Born in 1916, served during World War II. Uh, he's English. He's a uh, Brit. He's seen five different monarchs on the throne during his lifetime. Uh -huh. Didn't vote for any of them. No. <laughs> Once again, he's 107, and his uh, his uh, daughter-in-law, Ms. Carol Howes, said he puts his long life down to eating shredded wheat with full-fat milk and plenty of sugar for as long as he can remember. Well, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> so is he still alive right now, or do we know? Yes, and as I said earlier, he, he uh, credits his long life to having a gig in the Army in the mail room. <laughs> <laughs> during, during, yeah, he during made World it. War II. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't on the front line. Ah, I see what you're saying. Uh, okay. should, what I would the know. headline be for this? Old man's daughter-in-law. Also old person. <laughs> 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 yes, very, very old. But I love shredded wheat. It's yeah, we favorite. know. Mm -hmm. What's but his you name? don't like the mini shredded wheat. No. You have to have the bricks. Like the big bricks. And I'm trying to find the hockey puck. Was I don't think they make them anymore. It was a different company. Mm. It was, uh, they were shaped like a hockey puck. Why are they different? I don't know. I just liked them. They were fun. Oh. Uh, but, uh, yeah. They, uh, Easier to smash up? Is that a generic? <laughs> I don't know. Is there a generic uh, shredder we could be? Yeah, you remember how he does it. He puts it in a plastic Put bag. Put it in a plastic bag, take a hammer, beat it up. Take a hammer. To go. Meat tenderizer. He makes mush. I had shredded wheat for dinner three times last week. boy. Uh, there you what? go. Cereal for dinner is the best, man. It's just so easy. Yeah, it's great. You're done. How long does it take you in there? Huh? Are you building that dinette set? I'm guessing you got the legs all set, right? <laughs> oh, you mean from eating shredded wheat? Yeah. Oh, it's very helpful. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll move on here now. Christy, what have you got over there in the news? Perfectly round. Well, um, <laughs> it is that time of year, a mysterious tradition at New Hampshire's Plymouth State University involves impaling pumpkins on the spires of the school's large clock tower. Well, you're going to have a warning to the other pumpkins. According to school lore, Josh, the tradition emerged in the mid-70s, and the pumpkins have continued to appear on the spires of Rounds Hall year after year. Huh. In the decades since, students and alumni alike have wondered how the pumpkins get up onto the spires, but the school said it is a well-guarded secret. Wow. <laughs> There's some janitor freezing his ass off. <laughs> Well-guarded secret, my ass. Climb out here with me. <laughs> yeah. He slips, impales himself. <laughs> Typically, a, a, any news headline that has the word impale, yeah. usually very bad. Right. So this is kind of a fun. It's a, a biodegradable is, is impaling. Is it up in the air? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, it's an aspire. Right. Clock they, tower. Maybe they shoot a line over to it and then run the pumpkin down the line. And maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Catapult. Well, you'd have to be an incredibly accurate catapult. <laughs> Boy, you, and that's... although catapults do deliver the payload, I don't know how accurate they can be. Yeah, I'll, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, they're way up there. Yeah. There's two spires on top of this building, and there are two giant pumpkins. Um, they, they're, they have to have a. Someone has to either climb up there, or there's a, a <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> Something. They're way up there. So interesting. But it's a well guarded secret. So who knows? Who it's kind of fun. Look up one morning. You go. Oh. Hey, it's Halloween. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was going to college. There was there, these, these tiny like spires on a building, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the English department building, and a squirrel was impaled. Oh. 
Josh. And the, the poor guy must have been jumping, oh, leap, trying to... Oh, didn't, no. didn't, didn't make didn't, it. Didn't make it. Mm. Like, what are the odds of that? You've seen, <laughs> you've seen the uh, famous uh, gated community deer, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't make it. Yeah, where mm -hmm. I used to live, there was a large metal gate. And, I haven't... Uh, the yeah. uh, deer tried to clear it and did not make it. Oh, boy. Ouch. It was up there for a while. Was... On a much lighter note. <laughs> there are entrails everywhere. Yeah, it was really yeah. gross. Yeah. A, a the check... belly opens like that, and there's guts and stuff. Yeah. 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 Natural gas. Real Ooh. bloody. Real bloody. Mm, a... Viscera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sinew. Go a ahead. More, more venison. Oh. A what? Check priest has apologized to the local children of his parish... No cash. ...after Check. smashing all the <laughs> Halloween pumpkins. Why did he do that? Well, according to the BBC, <laughs> Father Yaromir Smeshkal destroyed the carved pumpkins in a park in Kurdoyev. He has since apologized for the vandalism in an open letter that was published on the village Facebook page. In the letter, he said, quote... I saw numerous symbols of the satanic feast of Halloween placed in front of our sacred grounds and removed these symbols. All right. He said, try to remember that my duty is to protect children and families from hidden evil. Really? Yep. Duty. Yeah, don't, uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't go trick-or-treating at the rectory. He's not giving out candy. He's giving out communion wafers. <laughs> Here you go, kid. <laughs> Trick-or-treat. <laughs> Thank you, Padre. <laughs> Does anyone take this serious? I keep reading about these schools that can't have Halloween night and... It's really not. It's not satanic. I never thought it was satanic. But, well, but you can. What is? You I can, can see why they think it's yeah. there's yeah something right. evil right. and something. Yeah, what, people, do you know people the history? dressing up, having mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, what that's a big the, problem. What is the history of Halloween? Do you know? Well, it's it's, it's a rich and deep history, yes. Christy. Oh, uh, oh, really? Go ahead. Yeah. The Druids are involved. All right. and, uh, Even uh, <laughs> even the Celtics. It goes yeah. far far back than that. I have a book called uh, Trick or Treat, and I really do. You can borrow it if you want. It's all about the history of Halloween. <laughs> we always just thought it was a fun time to get candy and yeah. nothing to do with being scared. Oh, far, far, there's way more to it than that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. You'll, You'll see. You'll learn. Carving pumpkins. It's all fun. <laughs> it is a lot. Loosen up a little bit, people. Halloween date all all the way back to the Celts of ancient Ireland. Absolutely. There you go. They, they celebrated crap. the new year on November 1st. But they had crappy candy back then. The day marked. The and they didn't have pumpkins. They used turnips. Oh, really? As jack o -lanterns. Oh, boy, yes. thanks. Oh, those are hard. Man, they're you, little. You, you give out turnips today, you're going to find out how many turnips it takes to break a window. <laughs> well, yeah, they didn't give them out. They, they carved them. Oh. You try carving yeah. a turnip. And you look, can't even get them up. Yeah. You they're can't get really the knife hard. in there. No. They're horrifying looking. Really? Yeah. I'm looking yeah. them up. Yeah. Pretty sad. So they were scaring away the evil spirits, right? Uh, that That's one of the uh, uh, legends, yes. When the people start dressing up like Batman and stuff. They're welcoming <laughs> in, in the 60s. <laughs> Have you guys seen the Skella Boner? Tell what? us about the Skella Boner. It's a, a skeleton outfit for gentlemen, of course, and it has a... <laughs> a bone there? A skeleton, an, an extra bone in the costume. It's it's very it, silly. It hangs down, yeah. Or wherever you'd this like to This is for, I assume, for adults. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I well, think Bobby, it's for adults. I've got a Milky Way for you. Oh, look who's... <laughs> Look who's on the Viagra. You. <laughs> little, oh, little, little Bobby Johnson from next door. <laughs> uh, we call him Little because he's short, but he is 18. <laughs> For the purposes of this joke, yeah. he is 18. <laughs> we just, he's a little short. The tradition of carving jack-o'-lanterns originated in Ireland using turnips instead of pumpkins. It's allegedly based on a legend about a man named Stingy Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who repeatedly trapped the devil and only let him go on the condition that Jack would never go to hell. But oh. when Jack died, he learned that <laughs> you don't mess with the devil. heaven didn't want him either, so he was forced to wander the earth as a ghost for eternity. The devil gave Jack a burning lump of coal and, uh, and a carved-out turnip to light the way. Uh, interesting, yeah. Locals. These are creepy. I know, aren't they? They're, like, real long. And... They look like mummies, almost. Yeah. I'm glad we went with pumpkins. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Those were good calls, right? Pumpkins? Yeah. Yeah. Eagle instead of Plus the turkey. A, isn't a turnip yeah. really hard inside? Like, I don't know. It would be Very hard. Not mushy like a pumpkin. No. Huh. Well, this, um, this article says that uh, many schools have canceled Halloween celebrations. That's right. And it's due to various, a variety of uh, religions objecting. Right, but they can still have their fall festivals, which is 
essentially the same thing. Kid, kids love dressing up. Let them have a little fun, for God's sake. I agree, but, you know. <laughs> tie, them to, tie them to a wooden pew. Let them pray there's, all day. That'll help. There's nothing more frightening than uh, <laughs> Halloween costumes from the 60s. Yeah, you're right. Oh, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Just this is 1962. A bunch of kids in yeah. costumes. Moms are Stuff making them nightmares. on their own. Holy hell. Did you ever what do, we grew up with, yeah, with a plastic do, mask and a little paper here? dress. It doesn't even look like it. Take and a sheet, cut some holes in it. And try yeah. to run across mm -hmm. the street in your mask. You can't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honk, honk, honk. <laughs> You know, Tom. Yeah, there's always that sad headline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little, 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 little Bobby Johnson oh, and his, with his erection. The 18 year old? Uh, was apparently run over <laughs> by a Dodge Ram. <laughs> he couldn't see because the family the had huge a huge extra bone. candy and place it in the cast. <laughs> the huge so. extra, bo extra bone was in his eyes. I blame Chick for this. Skeleton? Really? He brought up Skeleton. You know what? It is a pretty funny costume. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have Christy Lee at the news desk, it's and she, very has, she hasn't quit yet. British authorities investigating a report of a dead body. Here we go again. You ever see a dead body? We're relieved <laughs> to find out that it was Sir, just a it, life... It. Life-size sex doll. Oh, no. Passers-by called police after spotting what appeared to be a hand and foot sticking out of some undergrowth of a country lane in Warwickshire. I've, I've told this before. My mother made me touch my grandfather in his casket. I, yeah. yeah. Because if I didn't, I would dream about him. Isn't that... Yeah, a, a wonderful. How old were you? Know, we had a. There's a fun story oh. about a about a sex doll. But wait a minute. Twelve. Let's cut. To <laughs> chick's grandmother in the casket. Go, hey, well, grandfather. Okay. If you'd oh, pay sorry. attention to one word. <laughs> no, I was I'd so say. put off by it. I tried. I'm already trying to forget it. <laughs> a forensic <laughs> pathologist was called in, and after a 31 hour investigation, uh, this guy was sounds really to be like good. Humped it. it wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. She seems to be screaming uh, with a whistle. Police oh, that had a welcoming anus. <laughs> <laughs> no, they confirmed the foot and hand belonged to what police describe as a realistic inflatable sex doll that had been discarded. Inflatable yet. And I, it took 31 hence, hours. That's the whistling. Okay, now, <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can understand the real dolls, those things being right. mistaken for exactly. a corpse, but not like an inflatable... Have you ever seen a realistic inflatable no. sex doll? And if the foot and hand were all that was left, wouldn't it just be flat? <laughs> well, the rest of it, I assume, was under the dirt. Okay. You know what this this actually raises a problem, which is uh, in contemporary culture. How does one get rid of a sex doll? Hmm. And I have the solution. Oh, okay, all right. Well, uh, what's your solution? I, I do the same thing I do with my Christmas tree. Leave you it on dump the curb? it in somebody's yard. <laughs> no, I I be on a country road. <laughs> Open up the back, the way like back. The, like what happened here. Roll it into the in the, <laughs> yeah. the ditch and yeah. drive off. No, we need to have um. Uh, the way the way certain firehouses have a place you can drop a baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we didn't react earlier to your comment enough. Oh, Is that gosh. what you're trying to do? So there'd be a place. There'd be, be a separate drawer. Obviously. For sex dolls. For sex dolls. That way you could drop one off anonymously. <laughs> <laughs> they have one. Of this are, is a great idea. Like, don't like poop with us. Heaven's box or something, or what are they called for the babies? I don't know. The baby box? The, uh, maybe they are just called baby boxes. They're very... Uh, no, but it's a it's great, a great, great idea. idea. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, it's a place to so avoid... So you want the same thing like a baby box except for a... Uh, sex adult, dolls. A sex, sex doll box. That Wait way, a minute. Because we, we, we get this problem every once in a while. We have the story where someone, they see a, a, a floating thing in a river and they think yeah. it's a, a human body and it turns out to be somebody's sex doll. Because, I mean, there's no secondhand market for them, is there? I, I doubt bet there it. is, but... Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, you can go to the, the Facebook marketplace and buy a, someone's used sex doll. Refurbished, probably. <laughs> Gent, gently used. Ew. Except for the, to be except for the, out. Except right. for the yeah. genital area, which has been wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I destroyed it. But otherwise, it's uh, perfectly good. To... Her arms are fine. It's all patched up, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's... yeah. Ignore, ignore the telescoping uterus. <laughs> Ew. The prolapsed. The prolapsed uterus. Gentle daily. <laughs> this, so when you find one of these sex dolls in the woods, yeah. this is like a, like a horny stand by me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> four or four boys walking along the railroad tracks. <laughs> Want to see a body? They find, they find a sex doll. Now, that wouldn't end well, would it?
Well, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, when we come back, what are we going to be looking at, Christy Lee? Uh, we're going to be um, coming up nudity creep in your streaming television. Nudity creep? Yep. It's called nudity creep. Uh, we have a lady who came back from vacation to find her house destroyed. We'll talk about that coming up. Oh. And we have a tribute to uh, 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 finding things. We yeah. do. Oh. Such as sex dolls in the woods. <laughs> All right. When we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and took my breath away from the moment I first saw you. Will you marry me, Dolly? She said yes! She said yes! It's not a real person. It's 
not a real diamond. Real, natural, earthborn diamond. For your real love, from a real jeweler you can trust. Steven Singer Jewelers. Wear on your arm. What do you mean arm? Two days later, same airport, yet another flight. Now, let me get this straight. Nicoterm is a... <laughs> Nicoterm, guaranteed to help you quit smoking. I think it's a pad. <laughs> Hi, this is Larry Reeb, Uncle Larry. It's a sick world, and I'm a happy guy, and you're listening to the Bob and Tom Radio. Augie Smith is our guest. You go to California, swear to God, it's illegal to smoke cigarettes in bars and taverns. Mm -hmm. And I, I say, yeah, I don't know, not smoking is bad for you, but who's concerned about their health in a bar? <laughs> What's the complaint on this one? Excuse me, Mr. Bartender Man, I am trying to get drunk so I can drive home and have unprotected sex with some chick I just met tonight, and this guy's blowing smoke in my face. I believe that we should abolish all bar laws in America. I believe in America, the land of the free, there should be no laws in bars. And, and if you don't like living under no laws, then don't go to the bar. For uh -huh. example, I don't like Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't like what goes on at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> so you know what I do about it? That's right. I, I don't, don't go don't. there. Yeah. You know what I don't do about it? I don't picket Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't put Bed Bath & Beyond in an axis of evil with Kitchen Caboodle and the Baby Gap. I don't think the Bed Bath & Beyond should have to be 500 yards from elementary school. I just don't go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I like, like Bed Bath & Beyond, doggy. <laughs> I'm a divorce guy. I, I need them. And I'm okay. Okay with you going there. Thank you. And My I'm brother. even okay with you smoking there. You know why? Because I don't go there. It doesn't affect me. Why do you have to get drunk to be an ass? Why do you have to get tight before you get loose? Why do you need a double before you get into trouble? Can't you get into trouble without an excuse? You want to get up and get out and get free and get crazy. But why do you have to start by getting stoned? Pad. You don't have to get drunk to be an ass. You can be an ass on your own. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24 7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. There's Pat Godwin. Hello. He's over there in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and I have a world record bulletin. And here's Tom Griswold. Wait a minute. A world record? What is it? Go ahead. Well, stupid world record. Guinness World Records has announced the Portuguese Mastiff as the oldest ever dog on record. Wow. Named him that in February. The name was Bobby, B-O-B-I. The dog has... Passed away at the age of 31. Oh, whoa. Wow. He was born May 11th, 1992. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Man. 31. The purebred broke a record held by an Australian cattle dog named Bluey, who lived to 29 years and five months. Back in 1939, this record has stood. Almost 100 years. Oh, that's insane. Dr. Karen Becker, a veterinarian, confirmed the dog's death over the weekend, saying last night this sweet boy earned his wing. Oh. Despite outliving every dog in history, that's right, all of his friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Even some that's sweet. Maybe even an owner. Did, you, dog, give him, yeah. did, did you give him this story? The dog that uh, Maybe. probably had he had some puppies with. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on. He was alive uh, for 11,478 days, but that those days on Earth would never be enough for those who loved him. That's Man, these dogs are gorgeous. They are pretty dogs. Handsome. Yeah. Handsome boy. What kind of dog is it again? A uh, Portuguese, um, a Mastiff, a Portuguese, uh, some mm -hmm. breed with a yes. Mastiff. Aww. Very handsome. Very a handsome. Portuguese Mastiff, but you, you hope that the... Uh, 
the, uh, there's a, a, a bigger dog in the female because this is a big dog. Mm. You don't want to breed him with Yeah, that. right. Okay, uh, the female much. chihuahua. I don't, yeah, you don't want to. Could, she could master doodle. Master wawa. How many? Master wawa sounds like what was some <laughs> snotty island off the East Coast. <laughs> yes, uh, no. yes, we're, 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 sum, we're summering in master wawa. Master wawa. Oh. Speaking of doodles, I was watching a show on Netflix. Netflix, and it was set in 1950s. I don't know if I told you this. Great but story. Thanks, Christy. No, but it, oh. it's a Tom thing because I'm watching this, and she picks up a stray dog that's in her trash can, and she brings him in, and she keeps... And it's a damn doodle. They didn't have doodles in 1951. I mean, it immediately took me out of the... Wait a minute. That many, dog is not going to be walking around. How many doodles are there now? Uh, tons. There's a Bernie doodle. There's a, a golden doodle. You can pretty much Anything doodle. Anything kind of doodle. Sort of started with the Labradoodle. Now, for those to be AKC registered, you have to actually they're not. watch. They're not. A, but None of them a are. A purebred dog. They're not considered. No, no, no. Uh, like, name a breed that can be a purebred dog. Golden for Retriever. Purpose. You have to watch the Golden Retrievers have sex, right? <laughs> for them to be AKC registered. No. Somebody actually has to watch That's exactly this. right. Who told you that? Huh? You're thinking of thoroughbreds. My buddy that uh, gives me... Dog porn. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a dog porn guy? <laughs> Be a gentleman. I've look the, this look the other way. I don't think I've told Josh this. I was driving along a major highway. <laughs> mm -hmm. I look over the side of the road, I, and from a distance, you see like these six or seven dogs gathered around. And there was a boy dog giving it to a girl dog, and all of his friends were circled around watching. That's insane. That's awful. That absolutely happened. Did you roll down your window and cheer? Hey! Give her one for me! Aww. It was really something. Hey, Effer, I did! <laughs> Could we move on to anything? Is that wrong? Now, we had a news story Those about, are friends, though. Yeah, about a... Um, you ever crap right beside um, each other? What? That's a friend. <laughs> Dogs do all the time. I have had the... What? No. Uh, uh, yes. Josh, Outside? You don't have to tell everyone. No, no. I, but I, you're in one stall and you, okay. your buddy's in the other. Let, oh. let the record show I tried to change the And subject. you talk during? Oh, what? I've yeah. no. You've never done no, that? No, no, no. I did that one time in high school. No. I yeah. The, year, the senior year, the same year we were, it was the football team. We were undefeated that year. I can count. Oh, you should, you should be done it more often. Oh, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've sat in a stall, and somebody I knew was in the stall next to me, and we chatted during. Right. It hasn't happened a lot. And I, when I went in, I didn't know anyone else was in the other stall. Oh. And I think I did the. Uh, uh. <laughs> did you discuss your? Did you discuss your wide stance? Maybe. Remember that reference? <laughs> sure. <laughs> government, official, government, government official in Minneapolis airport. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah Those are gorgeous restrooms, though, in the Minneapolis they, airport. Well, they, actually, oh, the time very so we had a story about, uh, where was it, in England? Oh, we're moving on? Okay. The, um, I don't know which one you're talking about. Yeah. They, they, the, the sex doll thing? The, well, the police didn't know it was a sex doll. They saw a hand and a foot, and they brought sex the medical doll, examiner over. Sex and doll. And 31 away. hours to discover it was a sex doll? That that's odd. They need a new pathologist. That's good work, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. This is vinyl. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. this isn't even a, a we, we, we get these stories all the time. Uh, there'll be you know, someone on a river, they'll see a body, and it turns out to be one of these sex dolls. Pat, didn't you have a, a tribute to this? What was it? Uh, yeah, in Michigan, we had a situation where they thought they found a dead body, but it was a sex doll. You know, the fishermen <laughs> saw this lakes, body. Yeah. 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 Uh, you have a song? Yeah, of course. <laughs> We thought she was dead, saw the back of her head. Is it a naked girl bobbing and bloated? We brought her to shore, she was dressed like a whore. Yeah. The poor thing a drifting and floating. But we didn't know it was a sex doll we found, so we went through the proper procedures. <laughs> there was no pulse. So we did mouth to mouth to get the seaweed out. We used some tweezers. <laughs> she looked so surprised with her mouth open wide. <laughs> then we figured out she was just plastic. I took her home and gave her some air. In the bedroom, that sex doll's fantastic. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. <laughs> that was the ballad of Edna Fitzgerald. <laughs> uh, very, very nice. Well, speaking of which, it reminds me of uh, this uh, classic television show. Everyone's talking about the new hit reality show, Sports Illustrated's SI Swimsuit Model Search. The SI Swimsuit Edition is a top seller every year, and viewers are flocking to watch beautiful women audition. Well, Bob and Tom Television has a swimsuit show now. Forget about the SI Swimsuit Model Search. Check out the CSI Swimsuit Model Search. <laughs> okay, where is she? She's uh, right down there on the beach, Grissom. They found her body there this morning wearing that red bikini. Oh. She was by Gucci. Oh, she might have been hot last night, but she's cold today. CSI Swimsuit Model Search. They're looking for a gal with a great body who can lie still and hold her breath for a two-minute scene on a beautiful beach. Yeah. Tune in to Bob and Tom Television tonight for CSI Swimsuit Model Search. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can you please? Play dead. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Christy, uh, but oh, you missed an interesting story. Hey, uh, Pat, uh, next break, I, I need you to do a uh, a tribute again. I'll tell you which one it is. It involves right. um, it involves a university and okay. some confusion. You mm -hmm. missed a really cool story about this, Christy. All right. Um, also, uh, coming up, we have a um, an interesting story about uh, IT workers. And the um, and the, that guy or that lady at your office that uh, is the one that always helps you fix the computers. And a really fascinating study about um, women uh, being, um, shall we say, bitchy to their fellow uh, members of the womanhood organization known as Womenhood. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we come back, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Think you know your pro football? Then play pigs. Road, and we'd like to play it on your program. Okay, All right. go ahead for it. The full moon lights enough for me to see how the woman in you got the wipers on with the heat on your feet. You're about to blow my fuse. <laughs> I won't put it in park until it gets dark Cause baby you know the rules I can't get off With the dome light on I can't get off With the dome light on Shut the door you stupid whore They're playing our favorite song Ain't no need to fiddle If you can't find my fiddle I can't get off with the dome light on. I can't get off with the dome light on. Wow. <laughs> I'm kindly old-fashioned when it comes to certain things. Never wore a pair of short pants and always catch up on my onion rings. Some things I can deal with Baby, I don't care if you chew I even let you take your shoes off But there's one thing I just won't do I can't get off with the dome light on <laughs> Shut the door, you stupid whore They're playing our favorite song Ain't no need to fiddle If you can't find my fiddle I can't get off with the dome light on I can't get off with the dome light on Yay! I don't oh. believe oh. when you tell me that you're saving up for beauty school. <laughs> and I don't believe a word you say about meeting that motley crew. <laughs> and I don't believe when you tell me that you don't believe I'm a fool. But I do believe if that light stays on, 
The cops will see what we do. <laughs> I can't get off with the dome light hole. <laughs> Shut the doors, you stupid whore. They're playing that favorite song. <laughs> Ain't no need to piddle if you can't find my fiddle. I can't get off with the dome light hole. Oh. We're through playing now. All right. Hey. Hey. Comfort. So you're just rolling around? Yeah. There are better options. You need to try orange insoles. Orange insoles? Yeah, check those out. Proper support for your feet. You're gonna have arch yeah. support. It's got that deep heel cup. These do feel better. All right. Who needs you? Not me. Orange insoles will help you feel better and do more guaranteed. Get your orange insoles today and step into a world of comfort. I don't know if you know this or not. If you ever get behind the Amish, you know, those horse-drawn carriages, you know, they usually have that orange triangle sign uh -huh. on the back. Mm -hmm. I found out if you fire a softball and hit that sign, you dunk the driver. <laughs> <laughs> you just lose him. It's a great little highway thing to do. <laughs> Bob and Tom, you can pick your morning radio show, and you can pick your nose, but you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. If you're looking to lose that beer gut and you don't want to do crunches or go on a diet, guys, all you need is a girdle. That's the new contender in the boxer versus briefs battle, so-called body-shaping underwear. Really? Jeff Lewis tells the Wall Street Journal his elastic briefs take on an inch takes take an inch and a half off his waist. The 26-year-old events coordinator in Phoenix says it's an instant ego boost. Until now, now it's all your friends. And here's a quote from you. him: "It's an instant <laughs> ego boost, and I've never felt better. I've never felt better and ready to roll." Wall Street Journal reports retailers find younger men are more open to wearing body shapers. That's because we can catch our breath easier than older men. This guy told a newspaper that he's wearing one of these things? Yeah, can you imagine? You know, uh, people I... are pointing at him all over town. Oh, there he is. He's the guy wearing a girdle. How do you explain that when you get intimate Yeah, I was saying, when you get into bed, yeah. you all of a sudden, Spoiling! you know, hey, honey, can you unhook this? <laughs> and all of a sudden, this big old honking spare tire comes flying out of there. You got Kleenex oh, Lord. and girdles now, and do spandex. To, do you have to tie this thing off like the ones no, that ladies wear in the movies? No, it's not. It's okay. Corset. You got to have an assistant. Go ahead. <laughs> well, harder. My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmonds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. Ah, uh, yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm -hmm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> You don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Blast. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Christy Lee. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, Chick. In the performance room. There's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Steven Singer Jewelers proving how worthless those lab-grown diamonds are by giving away a free one-carat lab diamond with every engagement ring purchase. While supplies last, purchase is necessary. Visit IHateStevenSinger.com for more details. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. 
The world's a confusing place. It sure is. If I say London, you might say England. Uh, England or uh, Ohio. Canada. Or I think there's a Kentucky, London, Ontario. London, Ontario, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, similarly, Miami University. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Down there in Florida? Sure. Well, mm-hmm. um, there's uh, that's the University of <laughs> well, Miami. And, what, what, what's that? And it's in Oxford, England? No. And Ohio. That's Miami University. Great school. An international student who thought she was moving to Florida for college was disappointed to learn that Miami University is in Ohio. Wah, wah. Ms. Valerie Du. Who Do. Had- who lives in Vietnam, told the insider she was excited at the prospect of enjoying the beaches of Florida while attending what she thought was the University of Miami. The 19-year-old said she was unable to visit the university before applying and was confused when her acceptance letter welcomed her to Ohio. She told the insider, I realize there are no beaches. It's just a cornfield in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest of America. Hey, wait a minute. However, it's a beautiful campus and a lovely university. It is. The teen ultimately decided to accept the offer after learning Miami University does have a very good business school. All right. And many other great things. But uh, uh, And she is from Vietnam, which makes this um, tribute extraordinarily inappropriate. But let's do it, Pat, shall we? Where's the beach and pink flamingos? I thought this was FLA. No palm trees, where'd the heat go? Miami, Ohio, what the hey, hey? My, my, hey, hey. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. This ain't no Florida town. I would have been 10 long ago. This is the Midwest. They're planting corn in the ground. Why is it so cold? Oh, four years in Ohio. Four years in Ohio. I come from Vietnam. That's ironic, don't you know? <laughs> Neil Young sang about Ohio in the 70s years ago. Four years in Ohio. How many more? Four years in Ohio. How many more? Four years in Ohio. Get my master's in Lima. I'm pretty sure that's in Peru. Son of a... That's Ohio, too. Four years in Ohio. How many more? Four years in Ohio. Thank you, Pat. (laughs) As we continue with the... uh, Onslaught of inappropriate everything this morning. Yeah, on the show. right. Uh, I think it started with you and the baby being born at Luke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, never that was a great I, I apologize. Kickoff. That. Yeah, good job, buddy. Well, if you saw the game, you know what I'm about. Uh, we have uh, Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. And uh, coming up, we're going to talk with comedians Greg Warren and Reno Collier. But right now, it's Christy. What do you got over there? A Georgia woman says she came back from vacation to find her family's Atlanta home demolished. Oh, my. Susan Hodgkins, Hodgson said a neighbor had called her while she was away to inform her that workers had demolished her house. Huh. When a family member went to see what was going on, the person in charge checked his permit and admitted he was at the wrong address. Oh, man. You know what they say, measure measure <laughs> twice, <laughs> dem- demolish once. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> she has since filed a police report and contacted lawyers, but said they're still trying to figure out what to do. In a statement to WAGA TV, <laughs> the company said it's investigating and working to resolve the mishap. Mishap? <laughs> That's a yeah. nice way of saying that. Wow. Can you imagine? Well, uh, I, I would think that that could happen. I mean, she's getting a new house. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I don't know how nice this one was, actually. I, it doesn't I, matter. No. It's still their home, <laughs> Tom. Uh, hang on. God. <laughs> <laughs> Please, just draw some wild conclusions. Oh, no. I mean, when you're yeah, gonna, uh-huh. when you when you you call yeah. the Big Bad Wolf Construction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, things are going to happen. Yeah. Really <laughs> Who is it? Big, big, big Bad, bad wolf. wolf. Big Bad Wolf. Maybe it would be destruction. Yeah. Um, Eve of the Hey, I mean, that's a good song. Saved her forty grand, probably. 
What? How what? so? <laughs> Tearing a house down and sticking in dumpsters is expensive. Well, yeah, I've, but she, I've, I've done it. I think she would have rather I think <laughs> kept her house. house. Hey, time yes. for some urban camping, lady. Is it, um, uh, somehow it's this lady's <laughs> fault. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> this poor gal goes on vacation. Comes home to that. Oh, I bet it was a lovely you know, uh, uh. The way you love complication and the way you place uh, uh. blame, I, I, how is it you've never, like, mo physically moved an entire house? How has that not ever happened? What do you mean? You You'll see it. Not like, no, I mean like a whole, you put a, oh, like a, a gigantic house on a flatbed. Lift it up and move it. And try to move it somewhere. That well, that's hard. Like it's right up your oh, alley. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have to take wires down and you know, overhead. Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. No, you don't well, that's usually done for heritage, sort of antique, important places. That right. Have to do. Yes. Or whatever, but uh, no. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm sorry, Christy. Let's move on. What else have you got over there? Police in Illinois are looking for a suspect who allegedly stole hard drives from a Best Buy store by stuffing them down his pants. Oh, yeah. The Lincoln Police <laughs> Department said the man entered the store and put 11 hard drives in his clothing before leaving the business. What do you think about these hard drives? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else security hard in footage there? of the suspect. And asked, sir, sir, that's all very clever. Please put the merchandise back. <laughs> asked for the public's help Touch in identifying me, <laughs> the thumb drives are in my ass. That's right. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Get them. Get them out. Get them out of there. I think this is good news. There's somebody still going into a Best Buy. Yeah. There's that. Sure. <laughs> Which leads me to this story. There's a new survey out there that reports 60% of IT professionals say that they find themselves offering emotional support to employees encountering tech issues. I bet. <laughs> uh, and I, this is just the worst time for my computer to go down. It's okay. My son didn't make the soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? No wonder they're all surly and hateful. <laughs> <laughs> common issues. No, but they're also they're dealing with this all the time. Can you imagine? Yeah, common issues reported being locked out of email or computer systems would be one. Spilling coffee, water, or alcohol or water on their computers. Guilty. A, Guilty. Yeah. And a staggering 50% of workers confess to procrastinating on reaching out to tech pros out of sheer embarrassment over their blunders. <laughs> or concern about the tech yeah. pro finding, oh, well, look, that looks rather <laughs> pornographic and possibly illegal. Yeah, I wonder how you got infected <laughs> mm. <laughs> malware, yeah. I was told by an IT guy, you... You you really can't be looking at this much porn. Oh, really? <laughs> he actually was, said that to they you. They gave me a, a, a laptop. Uh -huh. I was I was traveling for uh, Rawlings, and I was never in the office. And I had a laptop, and it was my laptop, mm -hmm. but it was their laptop, and and the things were going wrong. And he goes, "Hey, by the way," <laughs> like he fixed. It. He goes, "By the way, you you shouldn't be looking at that." That was in the days of the <laughs> of the download porn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was early two thousands, like two thousand one. Wow. Wow, well, yeah, but I, I you think about then, certain, huh? uh, certain, uh, especially then. other people in the world, uh, for example, people who cut hair. I mean, they're in many ways like a psychologist. Oh, sure, yeah. Not, not when, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> trainers that have no. to be do one on one yeah. with people. Yeah. No, I think just, they get a lot of. They're trainers. You see a therapist. My for, trainer and I. No, are I'm not just. I'm just saying totally that. Different. Um, I think they they end up a lot. There's there are people who don't ever talk to anybody, but you know some old lady just gets her hair cut and yeah. she looks forward to. I see you as being candid with everyone. If they make the mistake of going hello and you just tell them your life story. No, I don't. As long as they're a stranger. Did you talk to your hairdresser? I mean, I guess it's got to be. <laughs> it's only 10 <laughs> minutes. Really short conversation. <laughs> you hear that, Baldy? You going to put up with that? <laughs> uh, Mel Cooley? <Yeah. laughs> just, no, no, just a couple of snips and some sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, the, the song for you is a snip, snip here, and we're done. <laughs> it's a short song. No, you know what I'm talking about. I know about. what you're talking you're about. Bald. Absolutely. Oh. I mean, my, for example, my my maiden aunt, I know that she would go, if she had to go buy something at the maiden store, she'd aunt. be gone all day because it gave Triple her L. a chance to talk to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are people that are lonely out there. Yes. And I think that I, we don't give enough credit for people that do jobs where they're one-on-one -on -one with people and they have to kind of...
be a listener. It's hard. I think cutting hair can be very, I don't do it, but I mean, it, it can be very tough. They you have know, to talk to, about people's problems. Oh, even, you have to go to like three weeks of school for that. Even uh, oh, hard. God. Well, Josh, no, oh, I know you, can, you you cut your own. Yeah, and you wouldn't know, would you? Uh, yeah. It's uh, pretty much the same. As well, it's, you know, it's not like you're coiffed like Warren Beatty in shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have more on hair coming up. Even Superman had a fortress of solitude, okay? Even he wanted to get away and be alone. I know, but I'm just saying there are... I just well, this, the whole point Not of this. Not everyone is craving for your company. A now. lot of people like being alone. Love, love. <laughs> <laughs> There's none By of the this. Way, excuse me. Going hey, to the house. House. Hang on a second. Quiet, everybody. <laughs> Editor's note. <laughs> Write this moment down. I'll tell you why later. Um, no, I mean if you're an IT guy. I think a lot of them. You think somebody hires an IT guy and they go, you know what? I don't know what it is, but you've got it. <laughs> you hope so. You we, have a, we have a guy here, very nice guy. He's a He's skier. Wonderful. So we get along. I don't great. care for. You know what I don't like about that guy? <laughs> what? He comes in. And uh, he, he, uh, I've he got goes, a major problem. Uh, you can't have this much porn on here. Well, I'm sick of him saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but he fixes something. And he doesn't show me how to fix it myself. Uh, so I always have to go back to him. Well, he oh, wants yeah. to make sure he has a job. Maybe he's low. I don't, I don't like that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> that Teacher, I'm security. Fish. Greg, that guy has the best <laughs> attitude. He's the perfect attitude for an IT guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he, uh, you'll say something, he'll go, well, we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's not sarcastic. He's just momentarily wants to, I'm concerned too. Let's fix this. He just doesn't, he doesn't show me how I to think, do it. I think <laughs> most of us have no idea to, what to do. And I'm just, this This article is suggesting that there's also a an important component to being an IT person, to being able to help people. So when you say, hey, my router isn't working, and right. he says, have you tried forgiving your father? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> like, wait, wait a minute, what? what what the hell are we talking about here? <laughs> Has he ever used the, uh, well, this is an ID10T problem? No. What? That, you're spelling oh. like idiot? Idiot. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. very clever. Yes. No, ID10T. Yeah, no, I admit to him right off the bat that I, I'm the idiot. No, no problem there. Now, uh, what's coming up, Christy Lee? You got, uh, oh, oh, I know, we have, we hair, have haircuts. We have haircuts in the news, yes. Okay, that'll be, that'll be very exciting. We have a nun in the news. Okay. <laughs> ain't got had, none, ain't gonna get none, nah, doesn't want none. She's tackling folks. We had the priest earlier who now we have uh, a nun. was destroying pumpkins because mm -hmm. they were some kind of pagan thing. Right. Ag again, uh, that priest, don't go to the rectory for your <laughs> for your candy. No trick-or-treating there. You'll just get a communion waiver. Mm. Thanks, Padre. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, <Appreciate> have, <laughs> we, we also have uh, some very expensive stuff going up for auction and a surprise Christmas album coming out. What do you hear about this? <laughs> and comedian Greg Warren joining us. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. If you're not, you're a communist. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to Bob and Tom Radio and for being here this morning. We certainly appreciate it. You know, you can see the Bob and Tom Show there on our YouTube channel anytime, even right now. Just go to YouTube and search the Bob and Tom Show. Next thing you know, you're what? It's Josh, and of course... Hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom at Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Big Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. <laughs> oh, is that where you go? Are we eligible? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that gives you the... Oh, yeah. So you can't see the uh, outline. Yeah, uh, now, yeah with jeans, yeah. It, it definitely gives you the, the J-Lo butt. Yeah, yeah, if that's what you want. Yeah, baby's got back. Yeah. Now, I, Chick uh... McGee has tried on a pair of these, and Chick is known for having no buttocks. <gasps> How much do you want on video? What do you mean? We want it all, baby. Money shot. Like like that? That? Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what, that's what I like. <laughs> oh yeah. There's no almost no difference. I mean, right here. This is more what they're looking for. Oh my god. Chick come in, Chick. Okay, Chick has them. Yeah, okay, Chick has them on. And oh dear God. 
Oh, He's no. got a shelf ass. Now, wait a minute. What did you do? have you, a shelf ass. You have a shelf ass. have a nice ass. How what did you, you do? <laughs> you look like you've got... Turn around. Let me see you from the I side. I can't recommend these booty pops enough. <laughs> Let me see the profile. Oh, what my is, God. You got a basketball in your ass. Going on. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. That, that is not just the booty pop. What did you do? That doesn't... That. What did you put back there? I... Uh, Attitude back here, Bob's what I got. You got a shelf ass. You got attitude. I got. You got a shelf ass. Is what you've got. What did you put? What did you put in there besides the booty pops? It's a little, little fluffy pillow. <laughs> oh. Well, that's a, if that's the look you're going for. Yeah. You know what? All the girls will talk about you at the club. Oh yeah. Oh, it makes me want to. It makes me want to do a joke that only four of us would get, but we'd never forget the moment. But I can't do it. All right. You know that is a. Well, that's you got a big uh, shelf really ass now. <laughs> that is a good. It makes you taller. Look at that. It improves your posture. Oh, oh that's great. I'm not all great. hunched over. Oh, that's funny. Oh. Oh, it feels uh, like I have a really awful hemorrhoid. Uh, <laughs> well, it looks like a big <sighs> awful hemorrhoid. Okay. Oh, I got to get this off. It's yeah, really, I'll, really hot. I'll bet. My, well, you probably weren't supposed to put the extra padding in there. is sweating. Okay. Got this lycra. And... Christy, is your ass really hot right now? No. Because Christy is also wearing the booty pop panties. Are you, is it breathing? Are you? But I Christy don't... didn't put a pillow inside I'm, of hers. I'm yeah. just. Yeah, that's they look pretty good. I got to tell you, Christy. Do they? Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they look very nice. If it's you're into that sort of thing, warm. you don't like, like a big butt. Not, uh, not that shape. No. Oh. Well, it's not. It doesn't make. I want to. It doesn't make your ass look huge. It just gives you more uh, lift. Lift in the back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks, it's, it looks a little. It's not making your it hips, like hips the butt wider. Is too high. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Let me see one more time. Uh, <laughs> you want to feel it too? You turn. Just turn to the side. I'll feel it. Oh, let go over it. it. Oh, feel. Yeah, oh, wow. it. There you go. Come on. Yeah. Squeeze it. Come on, Tom. Go, go there. Tom. Squeeze. Go, baby. Go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl, the food was great. The company even better. Why sit here all night long going on about the weather? I know it's our first date And good girls gotta wait But I just turned 83 And you said you're 78 The moon is full, you know what I'm thinking Let's make love, we're old and we're shrinking The hour is late, let's just do it on our first date You know us. We're Amish Bell. No poles, no wires, no phones, no nonsense, no shiny objects. Amish Bell. And now, new from Amish Bell, the Amish answering machine. Hello, Graeber. Are you there? Hello, this is Graeber. I cannot come to the door right now. I'm picking out my wardrobe for tomorrow. <laughs> Please leave a message when I yell the word beep. <laughs> Graeber, this is Carl. Listen, I have front row seats to a barn raising. Please get back to me. Goodbye. The Amish Bell answer. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Top Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Perform. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. Ace Cosby is here. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Testing, testing. There we go. What'd you do? I don't know. I didn't touch anything. Ah, uh, Tom, mm. you have to stop lying. I don't have a foot pedal over here. My hands were over here. I don't know. Mm. I just went out. Okay, yeah, I just went out. Uh, it's, it seems to be on now. You know what else is on right now? What? Well, we're getting ready for that Ace Cosby joke today. We're getting ready to hook up with comedian Greg Warren. But ah! first. Uh, but first, the fall is here. Yes. And HelloFresh, like me, recognizes what I call seasonality. That's right. There's a time for everything. And right now, the time is for great food from HelloFresh because they know how busy you are. 
And uh, especially after a tough weekend of doing this and that and everything else, wouldn't it be great to come home and just put together a great restaurant quality food? Some of the stuff quick and easy in 15 minutes. That's what HelloFresh is all about. They are all about great food, fresh ingredients. They do the grocery shopping for you. And they also measure everything, so you just do the putting together. They also have the Fresh Market Special Marketplace where you can get things like the mini pumpkin cheesecake. It's all delicious. What are you working on over there, Christy? Well, this is a, one of the family-friendly meals, and we've actually had these in the studio. The firecracker meatballs, and they have roasted green beans and sesame rice. They send you all the ingredients. There's a beautiful card with all the pictures on it. Six simple steps, and you have a family-friendly, wonderful recipe on the table. And those were delicious. Fire Scouts on, cracker. or they were terrific. Mm. Find out more about HelloFresh. It's uh, America's number one meal kit for a reason. And right now, get a staggering 50% off plus free shipping with the code 50BTShow at HelloFresh.com slash 50BTShow. One more time. 50BTShow at HelloFresh.com slash 50BTShow. Now, we switch gears. We crank up the satellite. And on the big screen, there he is. It's comedian Greg Warren. Hi, Greg. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, Greg. Good, good to how see are you. you? I'm I'm doing just great. Good. Uh, happy to talk to you. <laughs> we're, we're 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 happy we're happy too, Greg. All right. Um, I know that you're uh, going to be uh, in early November in Omaha at the Funny Bone, the Caravan in Louisville coming up November 9th through the 11th, and then uh, in St. Louis, your hometown, November 16th through the 19th. All right. Those are all That's true. The- some of my favorite clubs right there, man. Mm-hmm. Good. Now, um, you're also uh, seen on the big screen. Uh, one can find you uh, with a, a, a classic piece called Where the Field Corn Grows and uh, The Salesman. They're both up there. Uh, search for them. You'll enjoy them very much. What's on your mind today? Well, Tom, uh, I want to talk about an important topic today, uh, uh, the history of credit cards. Oh, oh, wow. oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, going way back to uh, early times, Mesopotamia, that's 5,000 years ago, uh, they used clay tablets as uh, a sort of makeshift credit card back then. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hard to fit uh, in your wallet, though. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. <laughs> That's why people put them on their phones in their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a disadvantage, Christy. Could not fit in the wallet. However, if the uh, retailer did not take uh, your credit card, you could uh, smash them over the head with it. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, it was a different <laughs> time. Uh, different times yeah. then, Josh. Don't leave Very your different without. time, yeah. chick. No. Uh <laughs> Although I believe Cole still takes those clay tablets. <laughs> <laughs> Take just about anything. Uh, Let's uh, come up to sort of the modern times of credit cards. 1949, old Frankie McNamara was uh, having dinner with his business partner, and he forgot his wallet. Oh, no. And it was a very embarrassing situation. He was in New York City, and uh, he he wanted to avoid that situation in the future, so he came up with Diners Club. Oh, that Uh, was the first one, huh? That's That was the first one. Well... It yeah, sort of as we know it. It was even a movie, remember? Diners the man, Club? The man D- from Danny Diners. Kay, the man from the Diners Club. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it, it was, at first it was, you could only use Diners Club at 28 New York restaurants and uh, two hotels, and you just basically get a, a bill at the end of the month. Uh, within five years, there were 300,000 members of the club. Um, yeah, it, it uh, kind, kind of worked out well for them. Uh I'm surprised uh, Josh Arnold and uh, Sean O'Brien, my two opening acts, didn't uh, invent Diners Club as often as they forget their wallet. Oh, wow. Well, it's, uh, there, there were many, many times I, I just misplaced it. I, uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Several years on the road, never paid for one meal. So, yeah, I think we, I pay for them all right. Uh, you pay for it one way or the other. <laughs> Yeah, we we all know someone who uh, managed to he he uh, he had a sixth sense about when the yeah, bill was coming and was and somehow, yes. really amazing. somehow would always be in the bathroom for b- b- yep. many 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 minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Greg, I don't know if you have this in your uh, credit card reviewed, but did you know the San Diego now Los Angeles Chargers? They were first owned by Baron Hilton, and he 
uh, was with the uh, came up with the credit card company Carte Blanche with two E's. Yeah, I knew Hilton was Carte Blanche. Yeah. I didn't know that. The, yeah, really. And, and they name Chargers because you charge on a credit card. A lot of people think. No it's, way, oh, really? Yes, yes, absolutely. But they have they on their helmets. They have the electrical symbol. Uh, right, the light, lightning bolt. The lightning bolt, yeah. But uh, by all rights, they should have. That's exactly right. A credit card. Is that right? They should. Have I, their... I did not know the charger thing. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. No, the, the 16 numbers and your a secret code in the helmet, maybe. <laughs> How about that? Yes. Hey, speaking of those 16 numbers, guys, yeah. I'm going to yeah. jump to this okay. for a second. Uh, this is there's a thing called the Loon algorithm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, basically, gonna... if you take your credit card, you start from the right, go go to the end. And uh, you double every second number. If you add those numbers together, if it's divisible by 10, that is a valid credit card. If it's not, it's a fake credit card. No kidding. What? Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's a, that's a way for them to figure huh. it out. Wow. Yeah, that's a way to figure it out. Another way is if Visa is spelled V-Y-Z-A, <laughs> that's a fake credit card. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Also, if you're ordering stuff on the phone and you change your voice, <laughs> like, you're, you're using a, I'd like five hatchets, please. That may be a fake. <laughs> that might be a fake card. That might be a phony? Oh. <laughs> uh... 1958, uh, this is sort of the credit card as we know it. Bank of America. Bank of America. I don't know if you guys remember the old Bank of America card, sure. which became Visa. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, they got the, they did what they called the Fresno drop. They just sent 60,000 credit cards to people in Fresno, California. They were, they had a $500 limit. Yep. This, this was not an application. These were just credit cards. They sent out to people. Uh, they did not screen these people at all, and it it didn't work out very well. Uh, <laughs> no, not. short term, there there was a twenty two percent delinquency, a lot of fraud among merchants and uh, uh, customers. Uh, they took a, a twenty million dollar loss in the first year of of sending out credit cards. That was um, how they did it, though. That's how we got credit cards. Within the first like seven years, there were a hundred million of these uh, drops across the country. You just send in credit cards out. It's illegal now. You can't do that. I, when, um, I, when, when I went to college, they did that. They sent you a credit card? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah they, I bet so, yeah. Yeah, uh, according to Life magazine, these cards were mailed off to unemployable people, drunks, uh -oh. narcotic <laughs> addicts, and compulsive debtors. You know, just come out and say who you're talking about. They sent him to stand-up comedians, and that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yes. And dirty, filthy hippies. And students. <laughs> Things are a lot more strict these days. Yeah. They don't just send college students a credit card. You actually have to fill out a small piece of paper and get a free T-shirt in order to get... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, a lot of screening. <laughs> yeah. Every, uh, every day I go home, I've got like three or four in the mail. Uh, am I, six a month, uh, ch chick is the is the average for yeah. Americans to get Whoa. six offers a month. Yeah, but you got a lot of money, so they're sending you quite a few more. Sure, yeah. I'm. Uh, don't they send you flush. more? The more that you don't pay them. Oh yeah, they, they love. Then that. you get more solicitation. Yeah, they don't want you to pay ones. them. Uh, no. You know, uh, this is a true industry term. They, the, if you if you pay off your credit card every month. They refer to you in the credit card industry as a deadbeat. Yep. Yeah. I am a proud deadbeat. So am I. What a, what a jerk. Yeah, yeah. How dare you pay for the stuff you <laughs> yeah. bought. Yeah. Yeah, the guys that they're making money off are called the revolvers, the oh. revolving credit. Oh, that's interesting. Um, the most expensive uh, card is the invitation-only American Express Centurion card, 7500 to uh, get the card, and then oh. a 2500 dollar annual fee Jeez. um the annual income of of people that have that is uh 1.3 million and and they have uh 16.3 million in assets uh i don't know what the perks on this thing are i was trying to find it i couldn't i think it's because like on my card i have a delta uh, sky miles uh, american express card oh, i so, get uh, double so do I. Uh, yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's a nice. great card you get double miles on right the centurion card i think you get uh a state senate seat. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good perk. <laughs> if, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I just got here through the American Express Centurion. <laughs> I've uh, I've held two or three of those 
in Have my you life. really? Yeah. Really? They, they, working uh, in retail for a while, they every now and again, the, you, the, the, holy cow. Are these the, are these the black ones? Uh, the Amex? Uh, the Centurion? I think, above I think Centurion is even higher, I, bigger than the Amex Black. Right, I think right, so, yeah. too. Made of it's invitation only. Made of, made of yeah. radium. But they're yeah. now, uh, they glow. Like, very heavy. Uh, very. They and, can't. Tom, I, I like uh, I like that you, uh, you know, try to act like the common man on uh, radio. But right? just tell us <laughs> tell us what those things are like, Tom. <laughs> I, no. I, know when, I know when you graduated high school, your father gave you one of these. <laughs> this is silly. I did read an article about them, and it said, it was um, utterly pointless to have one. Yes, it's a total. Uh, there's, there's no perks, and no. the fees are ridiculous. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, it's a, just to show. It's a status. It's a status thing. And apparently, is the official name of the Black American Express card. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah, they're it. yeah. Wow. And they were and the, you, uh, the gentleman using you know them were buying a lot of yes. <laughs> oh no, say Josh, I'm sorry. No, no, they were they were clearly. They were spending like fifteen hundred dollars at my little Rawlings booth. So they yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Christy, yes. up until I believe 1974, mm -hmm. uh, single women were not allowed to get credit cards. Yeah, really? I believe that. Oh, no. Yes, you had to have a husband co sign for you darn if you wanted right. a credit card. Yeah. Darn right. <laughs> Which is, you know, they talk about all the sex in the 70s. That was mostly because women were impressed by credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> You can help me get I a master card. I could have gone home with a girl with my Visa check card. Uh, the Visa, uh, you know, Bank of America card became Visa in 1976. And uh, you guys are familiar with the uh, sort of the, the colors of the card. It's, it's blue and gold and white. The blue is supposed to represent a blue sky. Oh. Uh, because Bank of America card is a California company, the gold represents the uh, uh, color of the hills in California. Uh, I'm not sure that's the case. I think the blue represents the ocean of debt that you're going into. <laughs> <laughs> and the gold is the pile of riches that the company is making. <laughs> I, I mean, white the, uh, represents the board of the company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember there was a brief period of time where um, a couple of the major credit cards had your picture on them? Oh, no, no kidding. Yeah. I don't remember it that. Was very... That was my first gag, Tom. Uh, oh, what? really? I got, that was my first, that was my first bit. Really? I got one of those when I was uh, in college, I think, or right out of college. I, I, I got like a picture with those fake buck teeth and uh, like uh, uh, my... Uh, glasses with like tape around it, and I <laughs> and I would I, I, and they put it on my credit card. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like a pretty good idea, but it it did not I last. Never, I never had one of those. I think it lasted a couple years. Oh. I mean, it was a it was called the Bank AmeriCard. Oh. Uh, so yeah, who knows? I, they 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 don't do that anymore. So I don't know why. But um, now now you, they have a chip in them. Yeah, and now you can, I mean, oh, now yeah. you can wave them over the machine. And, yeah, it's magic. Or you can yeah. stick them on your phone until your phone craps out. <laughs> <laughs> Check local. Uh, you know that magnet magnetic strip on the back, Tom? Yeah. Uh, that, that was invented by a guy named Forrest Perry at IBM. You used to have to do that sort of imprint thing. Um, yeah. But uh, he he was he invented it, but he couldn't figure out how to affix it to the credit card. They tried gluing it on, but the glue kept uh, screwing up the machine. Hmm. And he went home and uh, he told his wife about it. She was iron ironing shirts, and she said, "Why don't you try to iron it on?" And he did, and and that's how they do it. They they, they, they apply it with heat. Yeah, wow. that's a woman. And you know, you know what he said to her, uh, Christy? Iron it? What? He said, uh, good idea, woman. Now uh, finish the sleeves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, lucky yeah. you're married to me. You can get one of these. Hey, uh, Greg, Greg, do you remember, and the, these guys kind of looked at me like I, I was uh, uh, crazy, but they do that all the time anyway. But no, remember when they had the uh, books at uh, yeah, they'd look the up your department number. store, and you give them a credit card, and they'd look up your number in the book? Yes. Really? To, make, I, to see if it was yeah. stolen. To make mm -hmm. sure it was valid or stolen or what, and that the that was in the days of the uh, Kerchunker. That mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody. I called do and then actually, that. Uh, in the days of the machine, ready to put him in, a friend of ours actually did a news story that changed the industry because uh, they used to, remember they used to have what's it called the, pa the carbon paper. Mm -hmm. 
There, yeah. was, there was a carbon paper thing, and they would the merchants would throw all those away, and then people would go into dumpsters, grab the carbon paper, and have all the information they needed. That's right. And that's why eventually they remember they got rid of the carbon paper, and it was an automatic thing on the. Uh, really? Top. Yeah. Uh, remember that? Uh, a guy did that whole thing. We last saw him in Utah at one of our shows. Ah. He uncovered that whole scam. So, uh, yeah, but I think they're great now. They're really good about if something goes wrong, but in my experience, helping you out when they mm -hmm. get stolen and stuff. Tom, did you know about the thing where, like, basically there's a, there were usury laws, I think, state usury laws, where, you know, this is how much you could uh, interest you could charge state by state. And uh, back in sort of the late 70s, um, interest rates were really high. They were like 20% in some places. And Citibank was going, they, they're, the maximum lending rate in New York was uh, 12%. So they're just basically going under. And then there was this state, there was a Supreme Court uh, decision called Marquette, I think, versus somebody. And they said, if, if you had, if you were a national bank, a nationally chartered bank, you could uh, basically, and you were based out of, say, South Dakota, where there were no usury laws, you could uh, supersede the usury laws in all the other states. Yeah, so that, that was Marquette that, versus Loyola. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a championship, NCAA basketball championship. <laughs> we we got to close it up. Your credit is over, Greg Warren. Uh, Greg is one of my favorite comedians. Please check out... Uh, the salesman and um, and where the field corn grows. Great stuff. Uh, clean as a whistle and hilarious. Thanks, Greg. It's always a pleasure. Always. Uh, see you guys later. See you, Greg. Right. Bye. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, I remember the credit card with my picture on it. I never had one of those. It was real. I, I thought it was a smart idea. Yeah. If it's stolen, they're going to go, wait a second. <laughs> You look nothing like this guy, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, right now, it it's, like uh, it's, it's time to say hello to your feet and our, friend at our friends at Orange Insoles, Joshy. That's hello, exactly Tootsie. right. Tootsie. Oh. Tootsies, how are you? <laughs> Barking like dogs, are you? <laughs> Not feeling as good as you could be? Well, well mine are purring like I got a letter here, Josh. Yes? Uh, uh, Tom. Are orange insoles only orange because of the Halloween season? You want to take that, Josh? I do want to take that. The answer is uh, no. They're orange all year round. Huh. As an orange, you're glad you've got these in your shoes? Even though it's Easter? Thank you. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> if you're working on your feet all day, you're walking around with shoes that have that lame, thin, useless liner inside. Well, dead you, fish in your foot. Yes, you're getting zero support. If you're standing all day, you're putting stress on your body. Go to orange insoles. Dot com. Orange insoles offer arch support. They have that deep cup to properly support your heel, your feet, and thusly, your entire person. Heck, half the people in this building have them in their shoes, and the other half, dummies. That's right. And their feet hurt. They have them in their pants. As you know, we really have to write a new memo. Wow. They really are wearing them incorrectly. Dear Mr. Kessler, please put the orange insoles in your shoes. It's embarrassing for the staff. They think that you have an anaconda in your trousers. Uh, if the insole in your current shoe flops around like an anaconda, you're not getting the support you require. Think of a table. If it wobbles, is it a good table? Heck no. Think of your house. If it wobbles, is it a good house? No. <laughs> it, it really is. You might want to prioritize that, by the way. Yes. Head to orangeinsoles.com. Free shipping there. Also, you've got that 60-day we want you to be happy guarantee. Also at orangeinsoles.com, you can take their new souls quiz. That's right. Answer a few simple questions, including your symptoms, what shoes you plan to wear, what your shoe size is. And you're going to get recommenda recommendations that are guaranteed to work. How simple is that? No cutting required on these also. Sometimes you get those big mats that you have to cut the insoles. Yeah, I tried off. that. I cut them out. They look like one of those accordion things with like 15 little figures. and Paper insoles. <laughs> look, at all, look at all these like paper dolls. <laughs> and this is wrong. No good. Orange insoles, though, are great. They're true to size. Uh, check them out. Orangeinsoles.com. Okay. I got a surprise for you guys. Uh, it's coming up. I'm not going to say much about it, but you're going to be very, very excited. Uh -huh. And um, nudity in the news and um, women being awful to other women. Statistically proven, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your...
ukulele like I'm playing with my baby. I finger and I pluck her. I love to play an island song. So won't you play along? My Honolulu baby likes to play my ukulele. She strums it and she hums it. She loves to sing an island song. So won't you sing along? Ukulele baby, you can play me, you can lay me, satisfy me in Hawaii. Ukulele lady, you can lay me. My ukulele baby. Comfort. So you're just rolling around? Yeah. There are better options. You need to try Orange Insoles. Orange Insoles? Yeah, check those out. Proper support for your feet. You're gonna have arch yeah. support. It's got that deep heel cup. These do feel better. All right. Who needs you? Not me. Orange Insoles will help you feel better and do more guaranteed. Get your orange insoles today and step into a world of comfort. Scott, I understand oh that you are uh, a history buff. Is that it? Friars Club roast to George Washington. <laughs> I think the jokes would be great. Uh -huh. I think some will be. George Washington's a great man, but what's with the outfit? 
knee-high boots, a silky blouse? Are you the father of this country or the fairy godmother? <laughs> Seriously, if we wanted to be ruled by an old queen, we wouldn't have left England. <laughs> and a powdered wig? If you start looking any more queer, they're going to put your picture on the $3 bill. <laughs> Hey, maybe you'd like me to introduce you to Benedict Arnold. Lord knows he'll go both ways. <laughs> Speaking of flags, Betsy Ross is here tonight. What a frisky woman. Washington invited her to Mount Vernon. She was disappointed to learn it was a place. <laughs> Tony Edwards is here with us. I got this one T-shirt. It says, uh, it's a black thing you wouldn't understand. I feel kind of bad when I wear it because it leaves a lot of people left out. See, I think everyone should have their own T-shirt so everyone can feel the same kind of pride. Like maybe, you know, it's a Japanese thing you wouldn't understand because you're lazy and stupid. You know, it's, like, you, know, you know, it's an Amish thing. I made this shirt. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's a Republican thing. Give me a dollar and I'll explain it to you. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. E equal time. It's a Democratic thing. Give me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Understand, wouldn't you, thing dyslexic. Uh, it's... You know, <laughs> Everyone, you know, it's a blonde thing. I don't understand. <laughs> Pizza Hut, apparently, Pizza. is going to start delivering cold beer along with their food. No oh, kidding. Why? They started uh, the testing beer delivery program in Phoenix, Arizona. And it passed with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone did. Yeah. So how do you prove that uh, you're, you're of illegal age? The company illegal. told Fortune Magazine it plans yes, to expand I'd that. I'd like a large <laughs> pizza, please, <laughs> and 40 beers. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Hey. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. He's over there in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold. A couple nights ago, I slept for 12 hours, Chick. Well done, Thank sir. you very much. Lucky guy. It's pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> Man. You know, That's I did great. that, I think, a couple nights ago. I, I had to have... Uh, I Pee? think it's pee? food poisoning, but I still oh, oh like yeah. eight or nine hours in a row. It's pretty good. Yeah. Did you get up and pee a couple times? Uh, no. Just wallowed Actually, in it. No. Yeah. Yeah. I just pissed the bed. Yeah. You know, I said to hell with it. Mate will get it, right? Yeah. yeah. What do I pay for? Huh? You got the rubber sheets? Why not? That's exactly yeah, right. what I was gonna say. You have the rubber liner on your mattress, right? All right. Oh, yeah, I had those growing up. I'm sorry. I don't die. Yeah, wet, wet the bed a lot. Hang the sheets out the window like Michael Landon had to. Yeah. Remember? Remember yes, that? Yes. Well, that was a movie. What? Oh my, my God! You did. Mom did that to her. What? Uh, what? Uh, Hung the sheets out to let. So the that neighbors, so yeah. that the school bus would see. Oh, yeah, they had some issues. <laughs> you know that happened to Michael Landon. Yes, uh, I know. He made a he, he wanted made a to bring it, the, the public's yeah. attention to it very wisely, and uh, congratulations to him. He also was on the track team. He was a javelin thrower. Oh, really? Yeah. But he couldn't practice often enough because he had to get his hair done. Uh, he was also a teenage <laughs> werewolf? Yeah, yes. he was. The original, he was right? exactly Yeah, he right. outgrew that, though. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. And then so I'm sorry, werewolf. so you were asleep for 12 hours? <laughs> <laughs> now, are you counting the three on this show after sports? <laughs> oh. So do I count oh, now man. being asleep? Oh. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Not, not a nightmare, yeah. but asleep. I wake up screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the show? Uh, it's on uh, Peacock. It's called Wolf Like Me. No. I think, no. I think Josh, Josh, it's the second season already. Josh Gad and the girl I get confused with Isla Fisher, or it is Isla Fisher. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's a family. It's two. It's a werewolf, and they're going to have a baby. It's going to be a werewolf baby. No kidding. Yeah. Wolf like is it a comedy? Yes. Mm. Yes. It's just too much. I can't... Oh, uh... uh, there's Ace Cosby. Hi. Hi. Do you know that Michael Landon was the only one on Bonanza that didn't wear a toupee? Is that right? <laughs> that Chip can't be. And here's, here's Tom. Well, Think about Lauren it. Green you yeah. got. Lauren Green, that's a rug. Yeah, I liked one. Michael Landon. I did, too. Oh, no, I'm handsome. Done. Yeah, he had that the TV show Little Hair Salon on the Prairie. Yeah, for sure. Got a blowout every week. I liked Highway to Heaven. We would watch that as a family. Oh, Victor, uh, Victor Abono, right? No, that, no, that was... Uh, that was Touched by an Angel. Touched by an Angel. <laughs> touched in a dirty place by an angel. Oh, that Della. Yeah. Show me yes, the yes, dollar. followed by the much darker, where did the angel touch you? 
Very dark. Nice. Um, uh, ladies and Speaking gentlemen. Speaking of air. Oh. Palate, palate cleanser. Didn't Della Reese hit on me? Oh. Yeah. yeah, let's get to this. <laughs> he's with his joke of oh. Hey, Chick. <laughs> yes, Ace. Halloween's coming up. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you, ever, you ever wonder what the uh, mummy likes to eat for lunch? Hmm. Oh. Halloween coming up. I'm wondering, what does a mummy like to eat for lunch? I don't know, Ace. What? A chicken wrap. Sure. Any wrap. Any. Oh, really? What? Chicken in particular. Yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> what? Back they're, in the day, wrapped. Egypt was lousy with uh, chickens. chickens. Uh, yeah. Speaking of chicken, I got some chicken breasts uh, in my cooler from Omaha Steaks mm. Friday. Whoa! Fall is in the air. That means it's time for the sale. So nice they do it twice. It's the <laughs> Omaha Steaks semi-annual sale with 50% off at omahasteaks.com. Now is the perfect time to grab all your fall grilling favorites. When you use our code BTS at checkout, you'll get an additional 30 bucks off your order. Minimum order may be required. Thank you very much, Joshy. We return to Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What have we missed? Well, you're talking about hair. A recent study on haircut advice from women for other women oh. offers some surprising revelations. Highly competitive women are more likely to recommend shorter haircuts to other women, <laughs> potentially to diminish the physical attractiveness of their romantic rivals. Amazing. Study authors speculate the reason behind this recommendation might be to subtly sabotage the physical attractiveness of these women. Oh. You can find out more in Personality and Individual Differences. That's a publication I've missed. Um, <laughs> that, I, yeah. I read this study. It's pretty interesting. They would... Um, they would do it with women who looked like the women in the study. In other words, they would the photographs would be kind of women of their sphere and their sure. particular look. And um, they would actually encourage them to do things that would make them look less attractive. Hey, yes. when did this start, Christy? Uh, <laughs> since day one. I don't know who Mary's rival was, but I'm sure she had one. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. I think... Uh, oh, Mary, <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> As Mrs. Gro Mrs. Grog said to the lady next door, I think really short bangs would look good on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. That's fascinating to me. I'm not surprised by that study at all. Yeah. Um, do I've your... always been told that uh, nobody treats another woman as badly as another woman. And that's true. Absolutely. What are you doing, ladies? Snarky and catty and you're petty mm. and... No, Charlotte, that mole in the middle of your nose is really attractive. Leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Much lighter note, a couple who were stranded atop Paris's famed Eiffel Tower got engaged. Mr. Amir Khan had been planned... Khan! Had been, <laughs> had been, <laughs> oh, sorry. Had been planning to propose to Miss Cat Warren during romantic dinner after visiting the monument, but... They became stuck when a man climbing the tower led to the temporary shutdown of the elevators. While they were stranded at the top, Khan decided to spring a surprise and pop the question then and there. Ms. Warren accepted Khan's proposal. Huh. Well, I mean, that's risky. Why? In case he dropped the ring or something? No, she says no. What is he going to do? Oh. That's an uh, awkward elevator ride. Yeah. Well, guess we'll, <laughs> guess we'll, wait, we'll wait for the elevator or, or I could just jump. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow, this would be kind of a, a good, um, those uh, Hallmark movies. Yeah. You could do one where it's like a meet cute where they meet in the elevator for the first time, and then by the time they <laughs> wait a long enough, they've gotten married. See, oh, they see what happens here. See when what, he learns a new happened. term. He learned the a meet new cute, term. Josh, you like somebody, that term? Yeah. I hate that term. Somebody said meet cute to him, and it broke We hate it even and, more now because you use it all the time. Here it is, meet cute. Did you ever get in that mood? You just watch a Hallmark movie, Christy, just to cheer up? Um, not really. Josh you know, is our Hallmark. I movie. watch. Yeah, I, uh, love love I watch the Hallmark movie because I think, yeah, I could make a movie, and then I watch. <laughs> yeah, I could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I'm sorry. anybody can. Uh, coming up, Christy, what do you got? Uh, we have a nun tackling protesters in France. We have the nudity creep, and we have a bird <laughs> who became an artist. A nudity creep. That's me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's it's a nudity creep, like a meat cute. It's I, I've like always been creepy. Yeah. But I thought I'd add nudism to <laughs> it. Like a yeah. Take your shirt off. No. Excuse well, what do you expect from the nudity creep? <laughs> That's right. Excuse me while I whip this out. No apology. <laughs> <laughs> Be right back. It's the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. We're trying to see how Chick McGee will do in the cherry spitting competition. 
in the parking lot. Now I, I, well, here, I'll eat the cherry, then I'll give you the pit. Oh, no, no, you don't do that. No. <laughs> no. I've never been so turned on in my life. Come on. <laughs> now, when no. you do it, you have to pass it uh, tongue to tongue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, we just talked with one of the champions. It turns oh, out yeah. Nats, hey, Bob. Yeah. Nats love cherry. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? It may just be me that they love. I haven't been able to shower since last Tuesday. So. Oh, 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 don't yeah. tell us that. I can't get this wound wet. Oh, I'm that's sorry. Too there bad. may be a BO issue here. Oh, boy. Okay, so it's 50 feet to the poster of me. Right. Now, is the, the line is right here where the sidewalk meets the asphalt. So uh, has Chick uh, popped a cherry in his mouth? Does he have a pit in there? Have you have you ever popped a cherry? No, never have the pit. Oh, come on. One time in Wells, West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Chick McGee is... Uh, he's at the line. Uh, he's got, now, he's remember. He's the cherry. The pit, where is the pit in your mouth right now? Oh, he, he dropped it. Oh, oh three three second rule. Oh, I'm sure there are no, I'm sure there are no goose turds. Netta, he put it back in his mouth. Oh, this okay. is where the geese poop all the time. Oh, no. yeah. No, they pooped on the it, other side. It hasn't rained in Not three in months. Lot. Okay, now, uh, is uh, is there a line that Chick, ha he can't yes. cross? You, you can't cross. Plant your feet. He's got to get a toe on the line. Uh, you predicted you could spit it how far? 30 feet is what you... Okay, I think you're going to get maybe 20. Wait a minute, I have a severe crosswind. Oh, now he's... Oh, pussy crosswind. Oh, yeah, crosswind. well, you know, those crosswinds... You think can... the bullet cross complains about a crosswind? Probably. Uh-huh. Bitches about a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> have we got... Uh... Okay, go ahead. Do we, have, do we have our measuring tape? It's already marked on the, on the pavement. Okay, ready? Go ahead. It's off and... It got to the second blue tape, which how, is how, how far? far is that? Twenty feet. Twenty feet. Oh. That's how you. That's you said you thirty. There's a significant difference. Okay, now chick is leaning back. Uh, now are you folded? Is the is the pit folded into your tongue? Remember, he said the key is lung power and getting a vacuum seal. He just spit. Uh, no. How much? What do you think? What is that? That's short of 20 feet. Short okay. of 20? Okay, short of 20 feet. It's getting feet. worse. Again, what? I think you need a... Okay. Yeah, Tom, put your money where your mouth is. I never said I could do this. Oh, yeah? Come on. Okay. Come on, These spit. cherries been washed? Come on, chick, chew up a cherry for him. They've been washed. Beat them like a bird. Cherries. Haven't you seen them wash them at the store? Okay, go ahead, take over. Oh, boy. Oh. Breathe through your nostril. <laughs> You look like Jeez. you look like some bad lawyer at the turn of the century in court. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, I've never in all my oh, 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 he's ready. I can't do that. Are are you, have you swallowed the cherry meat? No, what's the technique here? You roll your spit tongue. It. Can you roll uh, your spit. tongue? Spit. I'm afraid I'm gonna swallow it and choke. Just well, spit. Now we could only help. <laughs> Oh my God! That didn't even go ten feet. <laughs> Here comes Christy Lee, ladies and gentlemen. All she's right, got, now we have a gal. She's got on her Daisy Dukes. Great lung capacity. Okay, let me get this microphone down here in front of Christy. Mm -hmm. Your mouth, by the way. That's the smallest tongue I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay, well, that's all right. Good. I, don't know why I can't do this. Like I don't a, think I'm going to be very like good. Three-year-old tongue. <laughs> Oh, 18-year-old tongue is what Thank you meant to say. The line, the line is the where the asphalt meets the cement. He's out here with his cane. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm injured. Do you mind? Uh-huh. Okay, step up. You, you, you can't take a running start. All right. Uh, is Christy eating a Christy cherry? Christy has kind of a controversial stance, Bob. She has her, her feet staggered. Okay. And uh, now the, t the technique, Christy, you're supposed to go up and down like you're doing jumping jacks. <laughs> Remember, it's that's Brawless always, Day. That's right. It is Brawless Day. Okay, here we go. Christy leans back. Can she spit? No, she's. you can't make her laugh. It, I, what was that, two feet? <laughs> was that? How far did that go? Six feet. Okay. Uh -huh. I you, think she got a little on her chin. <laughs> <laughs> how are we on time, Bob? We don't have a score as time. Well, well we have about uh, one or two more minutes here. I've never been a spitter, Bob. That a girl. <laughs> That's what I like about it. I think it. those Christy Lee, I've never been a, <laughs> never been a spitter t-shirt, might be a big already, item for the store. Uh,
<laughs> track, track down your real deadbeat dad and have him pay for these Barbie accessories, you know. And... Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Jimmy Schubert is our guest. I'll tell you something happened to me the other day. I was in this uh, diner getting uh, breakfast, and I'm looking at the menu. They got a stick on a menu called a protein scramble, and I'm looking at it, and basically it's an egg omelet with chicken meat in it, uh, which is wrong. <laughs> I mean, you don't take the eggs out of the chicken and then cook the chicken and put it in the eggs. Okay, that's too much chicken. I don't know who's back there cooking some kind of poultry cereal killer, some barnyard strangler. That's an omelet that spans two generations. That's wrong. That's not breakfast. That's a vendetta. You know, that's like taking your hamburger and dipping it into your milk. You don't do it. It's not kosher. You got to separate some things. You know what I mean? Hunting is is huge in Michigan. I'm, I don't want to upset any hunters because generally they're very well armed. But mm -hmm. I am uh, not a hunter. I'm not. I don't get the deer hunting thing. I don't understand it. Mainly for this reason. I think it's unfair. The deer hunting season coincides with the deer mating season. Uh -huh. Everyone know that? The deer just trying to hook up. Yeah. You know that's not fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, picture yourself. You're at a bar. It's late at night. Last call. You're sitting there. Somebody sneaks up behind you dressed as a chair. Right. And shoots you in the head. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair at all. Jeff Jenna is our guest. I don't know if you remember this. A lot of people were mad at the Mattel toy company because Teen Talk Barbie, one of the 200 things Teen Talk Barbie said was, math class is hard. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and everybody, oh, oh, young women won't want to take math classes. And I, I'm just thinking, no, that's stupid. What, are American women that easily influenced? Are they? No, I don't think so. Don't because either. if they are. I think Teen Talk Barbie should say things like, sex is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Whoosh, I work hard and give my husband my paycheck. <laughs> this is Jimmy Pardo. You <laughs> grand. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Some bitch. <laughs> There's Christy Lee at the news desk. That could be misinterpreted. I don't care. Yeah, Wouldn't you, don't use some bitch in front of Christy. It sounds like you're referring to her that way. Use that in front if of some If I was Pat referring to her, I would say her. I know who she is. <sighs> Let's say you're out in the wild and someone cuts you off in traffic. <laughs> then you... Some bitch! <laughs> See? That's what you do. <laughs> then you get shot. Yeah, that's true. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, chick. He's over there in the uh, performance room. There's... Josh Arnold. Chick, I was at a Paul Cawthon show. You know he's one of my sure. favorites. One of your favorites. Yeah. Sure. And uh, somebody yelled out, uh, hey, play. And they named a song. And yeah. Paul goes, I'll play that some bitch." <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. That's good. Hey! That's good. He used it perfectly. I like it. That's right. There you go. I'll some play bitch. that some bitch. I'll play that some bitch. <laughs> There's Ace Cosby. Cosby? Cosby? <laughs> I was just going to say, Ace never curses, right? You never, ever curse, even off the air. I heard him in the hall. You have heard him curse? Yeah. A long time ago, though. <laughs> never, never, never. Never him what, was the, what was the context? I don't want to say. I didn't hear him curse, but he did bully me. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> did. Get out of my way, honky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that hurts. I didn't care for it. The H word. <laughs> he told me, get out of my way, Uncle Charlie. Oh. What the hell that what does that even mean? I think it's a My Three Sons reference. <laughs> well, your name is Charles. That's true. You could be a Charlie. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. And you know who Tom is? That's some bitch. <laughs> Woo! Now, we're, now we got a topic. Uh, no, we don't. I got a surprise for you. Oh, some. Oh, I bet you don't. <laughs> yeah, I bet I do. He's got what? a surprise. Um, Pizza. ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, let's see. I'm gonna make an assignment here, so the rest of you can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. This is assignment can is for. Can you imagine somebody out there? You know, I'm going to uh, start listening to the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> Hear what their secrets are. They've been around forever. Huh? Uh -huh. They must be a real. What the hell is this? <laughs> Josh, yes, yes. you're in the hot seat. Okay. You ready? Yes. Identify the artist. All right? Okay. I, and I apologize in advance. Well, I have a policy on the show of not playing any Christmas music prior to Thanksgiving. But here, here we go. Wow. Hmm. I'm familiar with the Chuck Berry version. I'm not familiar with this version. Run, Rudolph, run, of course. Yeah. Um, here, I'll give you a little can bit I, more. Can I guess? Not yet. Remember, this is a Josh assignment. Chick's going to nail it. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Run, run, Rudolph, run, 
I know. Oh, I, got I know. It. Can I say? There was a little bit of yolk in there. I got this. Who is it? Can I say, Tom? No, because you know. You the... know. All right, then. I don't know. I know now when I heard it. <laughs> it sounds like uh, Christine McVie to me. Nope. It's not. Yeah. Who do you think it is? I think it's Cher. It is Cher. I was hearing a guy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that that I can see how you might think that is. Yeah, a she's yeah. putting out a Christmas album, a something gypsy she's Christmas. Yep, never done before. The album, simply called Christmas, was released last Friday. The 27th studio album by Cher features guest appearances by Darlene Love, Michael Bublé, Cindy Lauper, and Stevie Wonder. Well, that could be fun. Yeah, it could be very fun. <laughs> I haven't heard the rest of it. I just I can't wait to hear. I got you, baby Jesus. <laughs> that would be that would work. that'll be on there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was that our surprise? No, yeah, that was our surprise. Gypsies, tramps, and frankincense, myrrh, and wise men. <laughs> Your speculation is I've got you, baby. baby Jesus. Jesus. Okay. It's Christmas, Half obviously. Half tree. Yep. That's all we can afford. <laughs> Half the tree. Half tree. Oh, I like that. Reindeer, toys, and elves. <laughs> <laughs> So That's what they call that would us. Be, that would be better than the original. <laughs> I like Gypsy I do too. And I despise that oh, song. Oh, it's and full we, of the... I got in the car and it was playing on one of the stations the other day and I couldn't believe it. I hadn't heard it in 30 years. I'd break the knob years. turn my radio off. I'd punch it. I want to say that particular year that was the number one song it was big. of the year on Billboard. What? Do you believe in Santa Claus? <laughs> See, we should have, Cher should have asked us to produce this. <laughs> Those are all she's good. Not, uh, what threw me was she's not <laughs> shaggy like the ears. <laughs> That's what threw me. <laughs> Who's that again? That's your share? That's my oh, share. Great okay. share. That's okay. the best share. Uh, okay. I'm the best share in the share. room, baby. Um, I've got tetas like yeah, you. You know what? You have, know it up you, you, you have bigger boobs than Cher. I What's think, that next? Actually. Oh, okay. uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> is Cher tall? Is she like six? She foot? looks tall. She does. Yeah. Well, Sunny, I think she was, was tall, really she short. She was taller than Sunny. Five two. Uh, okay. She's yeah. what? Five two. <laughs> wow, Sonny was really Sonny short. Sonny was like 4'8". <laughs> I'm a fan. If he'd have been taller, he'd have... He'd have a fan ran, of Cher gone, or a fan gone, of right, Sonny I'm, or I'm what? A, I'm a fan of Sonny and Cher. I like I'm that. I'm not, yeah. and I never was. And then I heard <laughs> you didn't the, like the variety show? Then I heard the Wrecking Crew story, and I thought, well, I really hate this guy now. What's uh, the Wrecking Crew story? The what? Wrecking Crew is the famous... Band, back, side back musicians. Band. Yeah. Yeah. What's her face wrote the best part of... Carol the, Kay? The, 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 the beat player, goes on. Yeah, the bass player. You know, what, you know what Sonny brought to the table? The meat goes on. <laughs> that's very good. That's better, than, that's better than your share. The meat goes Did on. Did Sonny have a solo musical career like Cher? No. <clears throat> okay. It was good. Don't put a Christmas tree in the ski slope. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably hit a Christmas tree. So oh, that was that's yeah. only appropriate. <laughs> wow. Sorry, Cher. We... Hardly a mean, bottle of what Sotheby's is calling the most sought-after scotch whiskey is set to go up for auction next month. Says who? The 96-year-old bottle of single malt from distiller uh, McAllen, the McAllen Atomai 1926. Yeah, you, that tastes great when you mix it with Coke. <laughs> <laughs> a, little bit of, a little bit of Coca-Cola. No ice. Don't be ridiculous. We'll come under the hammer in London November 18th. Expected to fetch as much as $1.4 million. I like that term. If something's going up for auction, it's coming under the hammer. Yep. How about that? Coming under the hammer. That's what that's what uh, MC Hammer's wife used to do. Oh God! Oh, no. We gotta <laughs> dance on a way. When you buy that million dollars worth of scotch, do you drink it? Oh boy, maybe, I don't maybe know. Maybe on very very special occasions. No joke. Yeah. Really. yeah. What I can't even bed. I don't think you. Uh, I don't think you do well, shots. Here's, yeah. here's your inheritance, Louis. I'm going down. Oh, <laughs> I drink to dad. Oh. Wow. Um, we were talking about Cher's Christmas album. I don't know if you heard about this, but on Thursday night, the Rolling Stones played a very small club in New York City yeah. for the release of their Hackney Diamonds album. Yeah, it's hack, all right. Yeah, seven <laughs> songs they performed, four of them from the album. Lady Gaga was a guest vocalist on the new duet, Sweet Sounds of Heaven. Have you heard uh, Angry? That's a, I think that's the first single, Ang mm -hmm. Angry. The, yeah. uh, I didn't hear one of the single. singles. It was, I, it was okay. Yeah. yeah. I like okay. the other one better. 
Uh, I like the I like the sloppy stones. I don't like the, uh, the, the I think this sounds too uh, produced to me. That's my that's my. Beef. I agree with you. That's yeah, my beef. But perfect. it could be way worse. It's it's passable. And this is kind of cool. They're out there doing stuff still. Yeah, the soccer club Barcelona is going to feature the band's tongue and lips logo on their uniforms for the game on Saturday. <laughs> That was that's what the logo would sound like. Is that what it would sound like? Uh, what are they gonna do? Uh, <laughs> is that Charlie on the on the album? Did he already no, have the drum part? Yeah, he's on there. There are a couple of them. There. He's on there. But yeah. I mean, for the most part, it's the new guy. Yeah. yeah. Who's the new guy? And Mick was on Saturday Night Live. Kevin Phil, Phil Collins. What'd you say? I said Mick was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, he was. Oh, yes, he was. He was, was. In, uh, two sketches. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. He looked uh, eighty. Like Mick Jagger. <laughs> 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 No, what is he, 79? 80 or 81? Is he 80? Right? He's 80. Oh, okay. Mitch McConnell's 81. Take a look at him side by side. You be That's like, really something. Isn't that something? Wow. Yeah, think Boy, about Mitch that. Mitch McConnell can sing. Can sing. Ooh, he sure can yeah. sing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's his... Uh, so that's, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's you know, such a bad that's way to live. Mitch McConnell's uh, groin in the cover of uh, Sticky Fingers. Is people, it? A lot of people don't yeah. know that. Yeah, people think it's Joe D'Alessandro. No, no, it's yeah. Mitch oh. McConnell. Hung like a donkey, ironically. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Hung like an elephant. You uh, some either bitches. one. You you pick your party to hang on. Um, oh, no. God. Some said by Mitch McConnell. Um, <clears throat> some so. bitch McConnell. <laughs> so That's the, right. So, 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 so the story is <laughs> some bitch scotch. A million dollars for a bottle of scotch. Million point. Yeah, one point four million. Yeah, you know, so almost a, a million and a half. There's a buyer out there, man. They sure love. There is. Do you ever do the thing where you uh, mix it with an IPA, hopscotch? I enjoyed it. Makes you jump up and makes you jump up and down. That I enjoyed it too. So, so oh, too <laughs> and happier than my usual uh, yeah, uh, performance yeah, no, of this morning. No mention of babies <laughs> yes. or anything. No, 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 unfortunate. Yeah. Um, unwanted. Wow. Never mind. Uh, um, this portion uh, of the bottom. Unwanted. <laughs> this portion of the bottom God. Tom show features Chick McGee. Raycon, everyday earbuds. You know about that. It's fall. Uh, listening to the Bob and Tom show is probably a part of your daily routine. Sure it is. And Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever with three sound profiles to match whatever you're listening to. You can have the uh, noise isolation. You can be in awareness mode. You can be immersed in sound or tune into your surroundings if need be. You can listen while you travel or maybe during a workout. Optimize gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. The earbuds are comfortable enough for all-day wear. And remember, they do not budge. And with Raycon, you also get eight hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth syncing, 32 hours of battery life, and you'll love this. They start about half the price of other premium audio brands. No wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 78,000 five-star reviews. And Raycon is having their annual fall sale. For a limited time, go to buyraycon.com slash Tom and get 20% off site-wide plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. You score 20% off. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Thank you very much. Coming up, comedian Greg Warren. Oh, we didn't know he already, already did came that. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Coming up, comedian <laughs> Reno Collier. Sorry, sorry, Greg. I enjoyed your feature very much. And um, a, a story that you're going to like, Chick. Involving airlines. Oh, okay. I think you're going to like this. All right. So that's kind of interesting. And we've got a, a, a huge amount of nudity next. Oh. Just like bushes and, I mean, bushels. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing better uh, when you're naked than a uh, big bush. Uh, <laughs> bushels of nudity. Yeah. This that's is it. the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I've Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Rodney has his guitar out. That's a great sounding <clears throat> guitar. Do you have another tune for us? Do you sure. Anything you'd like to play? I'd love to hear uh, some. Uh, let's see. What do you... Uh, you want to do one of the classics? Do you want to do something... There that? she goes. <laughs> Bitching again <laughs> <laughs> Saying things she's heard from all her friends <laughs> And it don't matter what I do Or where the hell I've been There she goes 
bitching again. <laughs> I could make a million dollars. I could put it in her purse. Buy her a big old mansion. Things would just get worse. I could lasso her in the moon and throw it in with all her stuff. And she'd want to know where Neptune was because the moon ain't good enough. <laughs> there she go. <laughs> Betching again. <laughs> Saying things she's heard from all her friends. And it don't matter what I do or where the hell I've been. There she go. Betching again. I could have painted the Sistine Chapel I could have won a Nobel Prize Built a great wall there in China And that'd be nothing in her eyes <laughs> I could have wrote the whole dang Bible And read it to her twice <laughs> And she'd want to know why the yard ain't mowed And the fridge don't make no ice <laughs> <laughs> There she go and she's bitching again <laughs> Saying things she's heard from all her friends And it don't matter what I do or where the hell I've been Oh, here she comes and there she goes Bitching again Boys, I know you couldn't laugh at that Because she's sitting right there next to you <laughs> And she's bitching again <laughs> That's great Rodney Carrington Hey, it's Josh and of course Hi, Chick McGee, everybody Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg For Bob and Tom and Big Green Egg each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Pig Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. <laughs> oh, is that where you go? Are we eligible? Don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Here's truly Artie Whiskey, frontier golfer with another true tale from the Old West. Really? As you know, I'm quite the avid golfer. I go out just about every day and play 18. One afternoon, I decided to head on home after nine holes. Well, much to my surprise, I mosey up to my house and I see another buggy in the driveway. Mm-hmm. Well, I gotta sneak in the house and I find my wife in bed with another fella. I was rather upset. I can see that. I grabbed the guy, got him in a headlock, dragged him down into the garage, grabbed him by the manhood, stuck it in a vice, and squeezed it real tight. Uh-huh. He started screaming, Oh, Artie, you're not gonna cut it off, are you? I said, No, you are. I'm gonna set the garage on fire. <laughs> 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 Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. Hey everybody, this is Todd Snyder and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio.
Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Hey. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, Chick. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. He's at the <laughs> I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee with a follow-up email, and here's Tom Griswold. Go ahead. What's your email? We were talking about Halloween costumes. Right. And I mentioned something called the Skella Boner. <laughs> yes. Which is a skeleton, the Would. standard skeleton uh, yeah. costume for, for gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And then it has, a, evidently, it has a it comes with a pump and you inflate Classy. what you think you would inflate. <laughs> oh, I see. And it has it has a, a bone it's, in it just like the rest of your body. It's so, pretty. So silly. It's really funny. It's pretty funny. I this think. is for an adult. Yeah, you, you walk up behind you know what, somebody. You want know little Jimmy trick-or-treating with that. No, of course and you got, not. You, anyway, you got room for your Milky Way in your pants. Dear Chick, this is from Greg in California. My brother has the skeleton or costume. <laughs> he does. <laughs> it's... It's awesome, he says. <laughs> Thank you. There and, you go. And these people get to vote. Um, we have... Oh, we're, have some fun. We're um, being joined by Reno... <laughs> there he is. Reno Collier and his wear, lamp. He'd wear a skeleton Good morning. outfit. Hey, Reno. I'm right, he would. How he, is everybody? Good. I got a letter here. I don't know. It, it says, uh, the irony of Tom asking you guys if you can imagine dealing with a difficult person. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not lost on us, what, believe me. Well, I don't know, Clayton. What, what's he talking about? Uh, Reno, uh, how's it going? I know you're in your one-man show at the Woolworth Theater coming up at 5 o'clock again this coming Saturday. It's called Dad Bod, Am I Right? Yes, sir, and it's going great, man. We uh, we moved it to 5. The, the people that come, have most of them have kids and are dads and all that, so we moved it to 5. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just the time slot works better, but it's going great. Great. It's a it's a lot of fun and people are having a blast and it's it's actually going better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> and this this is in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, at the Woolworth Theater, and once again five yeah. o'clock this Saturday coming up. How do you get tickets? You can go to dadbodnashville.com or you can go directly to the Woolworth Theater. And uh, if if you have a dad, you are a dad. If you want to understand your dad, there's all kinds of interactive stuff going on in it. In the crowd, there's videos and music, and it's it's crazy. It's a blast. And do you have to? Uh, is the is there full frontal? I mean, I know you. Not now. You know, as a matter of fact, I have to wear like regular underwear because I'm down to my boxers in this <laughs> doctor's appointment thing, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to wear underwear underneath it. You know, just in case. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. You know? Mm -hmm. You don't want a Sharon yeah. Stone thing happening in the theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it wouldn't look like that, but you never know. You know, it's cold in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else is on your mind these days? Well, I wrote a country fried cake, if you'd like to hear I, it. Absolutely. Let's hear it. I've, uh, so we all know how difficult breakups can be, especially when there's a truly strong bond between the two of you. You have to explain to everyone why you're no longer together. You have to play up the new one, tell everyone how much happier you are and what a great decision you made. But sometimes you know you were wrong, and one knee-jerk decision to split has turned your world upside down. Of course, I'm talking about a man and a truck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've had to go downtown Nashville every day to work on dad bod, and finding parking for a big-ass truck is a nightmare. Over the past four months, I've gotten pinned up in parking garages where I couldn't get out, <laughs> gotten ticketed on the street, and hit a lawyer's parked car in a lot. Ooh. And just some advice, if you ever have to hit a lawyer's car, try to get him to sit in it while you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I barely scraped this guy's car, and I was a good guy. I left a note with my name and number. He called me screaming and threatening me with felony charges for hit and run, telling me that the car was the only thing he had left to remember his grandma by. And I told him, I was like, I don't think there's so much damage that you still can't chase after ambulances. <laughs> well, <laughs> this thing ended up costing me a 1000 bucks, mm -hmm. right? Not to mention, in my truck, I was only getting 16 miles a gallon, and my family was sick of me having to put 100 bucks of gas in it and then spending an hour bitching about how our country's gone straight to hell. <laughs> there were always, they were always complaining about how hard it was to get in and out of, so in a fit of rage and weakness, I said the hell with it, and I traded it in for a Honda Accord Sport 
hybrid. So, so. You're, you're going to be okay. It still hurts to say it out loud. All my buddies said, there's no way in hell I would ever go through with it. Now, I've always had a problem with people telling me I'll never do something. Through the years, it's gotten me broken bones, a couple nights in jail, and a ton of heartache. But to go against the grain is just in my DNA. When I was on the lot and the salesman asked me if I was buying the car to do my part for the environment, I'm like, hell no, I'm not doing it. For that. I don't care about that. I'm doing it out of spite. <laughs> and because I'm worried I'm going to go broke, but mainly spite. <laughs> As I drove off the lot in my new car, I looked at my truck in the rear view mirror, and I think I actually saw a tear fall from one of its headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Almost telepathically telling me, we spent 120,000 miles together and you ditched me for a younger, shiny whore. <laughs> <laughs> my stomach was a knot. When I drove it over to my buddies to watch the game, the razzing started the second I got out of the car, which I thought was well hidden between all the trucks. <laughs> Here's just a few of the jabs I took. <laughs> Are you going to drive that spaceship to your pap smear? Oh, hey, Greenpeace, you can use the same plug my granddaughter's Jeep is plugged to in the garage. <laughs> and my favorite, here's my favorite. Hey, Greta Van Susteren, all the food has meat in it. Now, I know he meant Greta Thunberg. <laughs> it, grew up, it got a much bigger laugh than you'd think. I muttered a bunch of gibberish about how it has a real engine that charges the battery and you don't plug it in, but that was met with jokes of my buddies handing me things out of their pockets saying, I've got your car in here somewhere, and... <laughs> Is there a joystick or a steering wheel inside that thing? <laughs> then my wife jumped in. Now, look, when I had my truck, you know, we'd be in a parking lot out in front of a restaurant, and I always thought it was hilarious while there were people out there to yell to my wife, woman, get in the truck. And then she'd get in and I'd slam the door. You know, I just thought it was fun. She's like, it's not so funny anymore, is it? Walking to the parking lot, woman, get in the hybrid damn it <laughs> now she's yelling that to me so look i got my new car in the same color as my truck to take the sting out but that's just like making your new girlfriend wear your old girlfriend's clothes <laughs> now i do like the car it rides great it's quick and it gets 48 miles a gallon oh. plus it's so much easier to park downtown but it's not the same so to my old truck wherever you are and to whoever's holding you tonight, caressing your steering wheel, I want you to know I will always love you. It's not you. It's the economy. <laughs> I'm Reno Collier, and that's my country fried day. Uh, thank you, Reno. Very, very nice. It is a hard parting ways with your favorite. It's a sad day at the Collier house, buddy. Oh, oh Well, um, I want to remind you once again, Reno is the star of Dad Bod Saturday afternoons at 5 o'clock at the Woolworth Theater in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Best of luck with the show, Reno. Thank yes. you. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great week, great everybody. Pleasure. If you are. come to Nashville, come see me. Of course. All right. See you, Reno. Oh, boy, it is, it's always tough to switch cars. Yeah. Then you get that buyer's remorse right mm -hmm. away. I miss my old oh, one. Yeah. Well, oh, you just yeah. keep it. That's what I did. That's mm -hmm. right. Wow. You have to move away, change your name. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, we have a couple stories we promised we'd get to, Christy. What have you got over there? Experts say streaming services are drawing in more users with full frontal nudity. Really? This is the nudity creep. Jeffrey B. Jones, a professor at the University of Georgia, suggests people have subscribed to platforms such as Netflix JBJ, huh? because of provocative mm. dramas that feature nudity. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> <laughs> the British dating show called Naked Attraction, which we've all talked about, not only refrains from censoring nudity, but also has close-ups on contestants' body parts. Really? Yeah, nothing like your two young 20-year-old daughters. Hey, you want to watch Naked Attraction, Mom? Nah, I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> and Netflix... Bang on him. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, I know that guy. <laughs> no, they were like, but, they're, but the thing was kind of funny because they're British. And so the, the, I go, so you've watched the show? And my oldest goes, yeah. 
but they're all hooded, so they look kind of funny. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, they well, do they, it, they do that in England because she'd um, never seen well, one like the that. The last thing they show are the teeth. <laughs> 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 they want they want these guys to get picked. Oh, I'll take the guy with the summer teeth. You know, summer there, summer. Miss. <laughs> <laughs> a Netflix show called Sex Life allegedly pulled in more than twenty million viewers in twenty twenty one. Sex Life, huh? Yeah, in part because of one graphic scene of. Male nudity in the shower, which I was disappointed to find out was fake. Oh, yeah, a did stunt you hear dog? that? Yeah, I heard it was. A, I heard it was fake. Mm. But, a stunt. Uh... Yeah, uh, because it was very large. Jones <laughs> added, <laughs> "People will never get tired of nudity. It's on frescoes all through Europe. Nudity is with us forever." Professor Jones said the phenomenon isn't without precedent. HBO aired programs such as Real Sex and Tax Taxi Cab Confessions back in the 90s. We remember those. And the sister network of Cinemax received the nickname... Skinemax. Thanks to the uncensored movies it began airing back in the 80s. Yeah. I think it did that. I mean, look at what's the most famous. Um, what is that one? Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot, tons of nudity. And then uh, for the ladies, they, they like to, they, you, you girls, you want to see the hang down, but you want like a story with an arc to it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they want to see the hang down. Sex yeah. life was the worst. You watched it, didn't you, Ace? I don't remember. Uh, I'm sure I did. It had a lot of nudity in it. It had a lot of sex in it. That's why it was so popular, yeah. Is that the one, the very first scene is they wake up and she gives them a hand, so to speak? No. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Maybe not. Oh, I don't. Maybe I don't remember because you know me. I have no memory of things anymore. It seems. So this the the point this guy's making is that people are buying the cable TV and the various yeah. other streaming services. Streaming because, services because there's nudity. Yeah. You know when you put the article the in front of anything you're saying, it automatically ages you 20 years. What do you mean? Well, I went over there to the house and I got the, <laughs> the cable TV. And I, I called on the telephone. And and they answered at the restaurant. And I got the wife on the I phone. I got the wife on the phone. Yeah. And I and said, uh, well, the dog is pissing on the carpet. And she <laughs> said, I got the clap. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know if you heard about you this. It for me. So, uh, <laughs> But at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico over the weekend, a car line to the entrance was two and a half miles long. That's because the site where the first atomic bomb was detonated was open to the public. The sun rose twice that day, my friends. And, <laughs> of course, the record turnout is due to the popularity of... Barbie. I mean, uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> That's correct, Josh. You know, over the weekend, uh, what was it, Saturday? Yeah, it was mm -hmm. uh, Back to the Future Day. They go back to October 21st. 2015, I think, or something, in uh, number two. Oh, probably. they go forward. They go forward, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Trinity site is open only twice a year for spectators, once in October and once in April. Wow. A designated National Historic Landmark normally closed to the public because... Radiation? It's still, no, because it's still an impact zone for missiles. It's still an active oh. military base. White Sands is. I thought, people, I thought people could lie down and you could take pictures of their skeleton. <laughs> how, long, uh, how long is it open? Uh, just the weekend? Just one week? day, I think. Just one day? I think it was one day in October and one day in April. Yeah. Tom, send me to Alamogordo, New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go in April now. I got another Share Christmas song for you. You want a little taste? Okay. Yay. Okay. Once again, Cher oh. has released a Christmas album. We heard a little bit of uh, this Christmas. one. Oh, the reindeers, you know you're the That's the same song. No, this is, uh, this is the one we just played. This is Run Run She's a good singer. Okay, but now here's the other. I haven't heard this one. I got one request. Oh, there you go. Get deeper as she aged. Production. Uh, um, DJ play a Christmas song. Yeah. Are there, are there, I didn't know there other Christmas song that you dance to. Uh, apparently. That one there. I guess right that. that thumping. <laughs> Well, you got to know your audience, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's that I believe in love thing. That's what yeah, that does sound like I believe in love. That's a fun one. Um, <laughs> if I could jingle your bells. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I like that very much. I want an Oscar. <laughs> now, we were talking about, we were talking about uh, the old days of credit cards. And mm -hmm. Greg mentioned they started literally with like tablets. Yeah. They were, uh, you know, clubbing back in the day of caveman was different. 
<laughs> we should go clubbing. You wouldn't <laughs> hear Cher singing. It really involved clubs. Clubs. <laughs> and I like that one over there. Go hit her. Drag her out. I think Cher is a big gay audience. <laughs> That's my point. Thanks. <laughs> May, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe so. I don't know. Did you guys ever talk to Cher? Yeah. Really? She's great. What is her real name? Sarkazian. Cher um, Sarkazian? Cher Sherilyn... Isn't it? That's something. It was something like that. She's of Armenian. Uh, I, is it weird that I like her? I like. No, her. she's great. She's a good actress. I'm like a, I'm a 45 year old straight man, but I really yeah. like. I like Cher and I like Bette Midler and I. Uh, I do too. Yeah. Well, Am I uh -oh. gay? It's okay. Am I gay? May could be. Go yeah. for it. My dad no, might help the show. Have you ever had a lasting <laughs> uh, relationship? No. Oh, with a female, you mean? Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. You Who's have. You've had. You and Warren ever, you know, have wandering hands there? <laughs> We've the made road, out, but he, as he explained to me, that's what openers do. Ah, uh, that's open. your job, They huh? have to kiss. Oh, that's right. Oh, you, don't you, uh, after a show, you get the girls back there and you go, hey, uh, if we kiss, will you girls kiss? And yes, you, and then yeah. Greg and I kiss for 20 minutes. Right. And then the girls <laughs> love yeah. each other. Okay. Girls I don't know. Then, I've had a um, Bareback. Nate Bargatze is on tour, but he's uh, postponed the tour for a while because he's going to be hosting Saturday Night Live special guest Foo Fighters. That'll be great. Uh, an old friend of the show. It's good to see Nate doing so well. Uh, right now, um, speaking of things that are doing well, Hello Fresh doing great because they understand seasonality. I'm a big fan of seasonality. The right, uh, the right food at the right time of year. Freshness is the key. Also, convenience is the key. That's where HelloFresh comes in because they are the number one meal kit in America. You got to learn something today. Well, that is about the code. The code is 50BTSHOW. What does that mean? Well, it means you're going to get 50% off and free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash 50BTSHOW. Christy, what are you working on over there? Well, this is a fall treat. Brown sugar glazed pork tenderloin with sweet potato wedges and Brussels sprout apple hash. All the ingredients are sent to you. Four easy steps, less than 30 minutes. You have this great meal, and it just screams fall. Brown sugar glazed pork tenderloin, yum, yum, they've yum. Done, they've done the shopping. They've done the measuring. <laughs> they also have those quick and easy options, including uh, meals that take just 15 minutes. We're talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When you're busy, take some of the stress out of feeding yourself and feeding the family with fall flavors. A limited lineup of easy eats from HelloFresh from the HelloFresh market, including mini pumpkin cheesecake. Check it out. 50 BT Show is that code. HelloFresh.com slash 50 BT Show. Coming up, it's our history lesson and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to Well, I was thinking some. You want to hear? Uh, I was thinking since it's summertime. Yes. Uh, and uh, everyone's yeah. watching baseball, playing baseball. You have a. You, do, do you know your softball tribute? Yeah, I can uh, try to get through it better than I did the other one. Church league softball. Let's pull the key up. <clears throat> Great idea. Yeah. There, <laughs> there we go. go. Church league softball fist fight. Getting washed in the blood on a Tuesday night. What would Jesus do? Lord, he wouldn't do that. Knock hell out of a preacher with the softball bat. Well, the swinging shepherds from the sheep of the Savior were tied with the Sourwood Church of Christ, an example of some highly unholy behavior in a game that had already been protested twice. Something unbiblical must have been said for them to be aiming heat at a minister's head. <laughs> Talking the clergy ain't the thing to do, but neither's the high hard one on a 0 and 2. <laughs> Church league, softball, fist fight, a bloody laying on a hands neat the left lights knocking out four teeth getting a busted lip ain't exactly my idea of christian fellowship church league softball fist fight rolling around the pitcher's mound it just don't look right for nice people from the church and the sunday school class to trade the cup of brotherhood for a can of whoop ass Ooh, yeah. mm. <sighs> thank you tim wilson Josh, what's wrong? And my back is sore, my legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah, uh, 
Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh! Josh! Did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific! <laughs> See me. you later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. Do you wear a thong, Miss Pat? Is you out your damn mind? <laughs> I have the hard time wiping it. What am I put a string back there for? Oh, <laughs> you know what I did just discover? I just discovered the moisture wipes. I had the diaper wipes for grown of people. Of course, I used the wipes. Oh, yeah. incredible. It's like oh. a shower in the middle of the day. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're, they're so much easier. Because you know how you wipe it and the tissue gets stuck? Oh, None yeah. of that. Everything None of that. is smooth. What the hell? We're, 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 <laughs> I'm talking about wet wipes. We're talking about wet wipes. You use wet wipes? On the baby's ass. I'm an adult. I'm sorry. <laughs> you should get them for the adults. They're great, Tom. I just discovered them. They're great for fat people. You're getting a text. <laughs> well, anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh -uh, I'm going home. I'm going to Goodwill. Okay. To shop list. All right. Stop listening at the Goodwill. I'm out. I'm out. Bye bye. You took my breath away from the moment I first saw you. Will you marry me, Dolly? She said yes! She said yes! It's not a real person. It's not a real diamond. Real, natural, earthborn diamond. For your real love, from a real jeweler you can trust. Steven Singer Jewelers. <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you, oh no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. I mean, why the penis and the breast? Those are the only two body parts we're crazy about getting as big as we can get them, mm -hmm. right? Although some I mean, people are doing uh, the... Uh, the buttocks. The buttocks what? implants. Yeah. 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 Buttocks yeah. Implants. Yeah. That's new. Yeah, it is. Normally, you know, well, then they, they sell uh, panties with inserts in them. Yeah. Or, and, and underwear for men with inserts yeah. in them. See, that's... Wow. No, you, I assume you, have, you haven't had any plastic surgery of any kind. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I had an idea. Why do you assume that? If so, that? No. you should sue. <laughs> <laughs> because because if, if the doctors arrived at that... Um, yeah. Well, you, you should have seen them before. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unless, no. your, unless your nose was shaped like a penis uh, before, <laughs> you really... This isn't enough to... No, that, no, 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 that, no, they, no, they, they could have done no, a little no, bit no, better. No, We're going to take hey, a break. Phil is one of our friends. Let right? him defend himself. Oh, My God. Oh, no, 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 that was... On Bob, <laughs> that one was on Bob. You piled up. I, uh, my, my brother Dennis and I one time we were talking about this, and you know, mm -hmm. like if you say you're a comedian, then you're kind of like you you, you got to get tell ready. me a joke. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. So we decide we were gonna we were golfing, and they hooked us up with two other guys, mm -hmm. and we said to each other, let's just not say we're comedians and see how it goes. Okay. And then I said, well, what are we gonna say if they ask? Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, let's just say we're house painters. 
Okay. Well, we had 18 holes of trying to answer questions about paint <laughs> that we were incredibly underqualified for. <laughs> yeah, I don't so know. So you use a latex, you do an oil base, well, you know, whatever the house needs. <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah. it needs. Uh, I'm like, why didn't we say we were comedians? I know the answers to the questions. <laughs> this is Next time, go with a hardware store. See Hi, this Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Yes, sir. Um, I think we, uh, did we get everything in the news we promised? Yeah, we, it's time for our history lesson. Okay. Did we have our surprise? Yeah, it was oh, the share sure. song. <laughs> It was the quiz that you. <laughs> it, was, oh. it was the quiz you failed miserably. Wait I can see why you'd be upset. <laughs> Is that really, our our surprise was really a share Christmas song. Yep, that was it. Share's got a Christmas album. It's oh. a nice surprise. Oh, <laughs> All right. I'm surprised, I'm surprised she didn't call it Don. We now are gay apparel for her fans. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Time now for Today in History. Tom, what number is it? I got to find it. Two, it's three. Two, three. Uh, third. Okay. Should we write this bit, Tom, for Christmas? Hi, I'm Don Wee now. <laughs> you know, the gay apparel store. And he sells gay apparel. <laughs> Those are tight. That is silly. Um, let's see. It is silly, Wee. isn't it, Pat? Don <laughs> Wee now are. <laughs> Hello. It's my five-month anniversary. <laughs> Some uh, say it would marriage? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, what, huh? By the way, in Christie's case, huh? in Christie's case, we do now we measure in months. Yeah. It used to be weeks. <laughs> what? Well, that's great. Yeah. Are we celebrating months now? <laughs> sure. Oh God. Okay. You know what the present for five month uh, wedding is? What? Butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Next step, butt stuff. That's right. Not on Monday night. It's my night off. Okay. <laughs> you have to remember this. You're going to thank me later. You have to relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, look, we have that we have birthdays. Fault. Let's start with birthdays, shall All right. we? All right. Uh, 1869. This one's for you, Christy. Yes. 69. 1869. The birthday of John Heisman. Of the Heisman Trophy, dude? Nope. Very good. <laughs> yeah. he invented the Legendary trophy. football player never won a Heisman Trophy. No. no why did they name shame? it after him? Uh, 1925, Money. happy birthday, Johnny Carson. Mm. Also never won a Heisman, a Heisman trophy. trophy. 1940, Pele won the Heisman Trophy. Isn't that never something? For soccer. I didn't know they did that. Oh, yeah. Pele would be a great name for a sex worker. <laughs> pay for a lay. Pay for a lay. That's no better than he, grade school. You know, he, he was... <laughs> I swear. <laughs> pay Look, Jimmy, pay lay. Uh, mm. He was like the Will Chamberlain of the soccer world when it came to the ladies. Pele was? Oh, really? Oh, God. No idea. He disappointed some women, though, because he would never use his hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this idea of head, wow, that hurt. Ooh, Very nice. They do seem to like that hand Ooh. stuff. Don't they? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Where were we? Okay, uh, let's see. Pele, Johnny Carson. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic. I like Weird Al, friend of the show, born in uh, 1959. Love, yeah. My Bologna. Love it. <laughs> 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 Eat it. Uh, <laughs> another one missed the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and he I have, could have. He I could like have, the titles coming you know, from you. He, he, he could have taken that a really too. bad I, direction. I left. And he did. He chose it. not to. Yes. He yes. did not go into. Uh, what was Gangster Paradise? What was that? Amish. Amish. Amish Paradise. Amish Paradise. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, that's funny. Ryan Reynolds. There we go. 1976. Chick loves him. Oh, he's, he's an right. unlikable person, isn't he? Yeah, right. Just, just, no charisma. Just yeah. sold his gym for what? Gin for hundreds of millions of dollars, Something like that. The guys, the grill, and the pizza place. I remember that show. Um, not enough uh, took not enough pizza place <laughs> for my taste. Yeah, the pizza place with the, got the most fan mail. <laughs> Here we go. Isn't that interesting. That's interesting. Um, who? Christy Lee. Yes. This is. I'm. Um, this is so. This. Christy Lee did. No, no, Christy, oh. um, I think you'll get this. 1933, this fellow and his gang robbed the Central National Bank of Greencastle, Indiana, taking $75,000. John Dillinger? John Dillinger is the correct answer. They call him the pickle. Very good. The, isn't dill, his, the dill pickle? Isn't the dill his pickle. penis in a pickle jar? 
Right. <laughs> like urban legend. I think that's, Wieners uh, in a pickle yeah. jar. There's a, there's a photograph. Of, there's a photograph of Dillinger on the right, right, table. Call it, so, table, yes. and it looks Slab. like looks like he's uh, right. uh, massively endowed in a wreck. Yeah, but that's that's right. just a trick. Um, just it's a trick. trick. Uh, no, he'd be bigger than me, and that's not happening. Um, <laughs> wow, uh, this is. Uh, Exciting! Apple releases the iPod in 2001. Whoa! I remember Still paying that. for it. So, I remember. I still have mine. So great. First oh. one. I thought I'd lost. Take it over to Antiques Roadshow. See what, the, what they'll give you for it. Um, Time out. Adele word. Reese's "Hello" becoming the first song with more than a million downloads in a week in 2015. Adele. Adele. Oh, I thought you said Della Reese. Della <laughs> 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 <Just> Reese. <laughs> Tom once uh, went to an NFL game on Sunday. Says the refs had been drinking. Something. What he said. I don't know. Josh got a uh, big weekend. Had a delivery box of Omaha steaks. Mm -hmm. Remember our promo code BTS. Okay. And I'll send you all pictures of what I make. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's, uh, we went over uh, many, many uh, listeners and our porno and stripper names. We talked about that for a little while. I mm -hmm. like those. It's, fun, it's a fun formula. Well, no, it's, it's, uh, well, what was yours again, Josh? Uh, my stripper uh, today, because it's uh, the first, the uh, the model of your first car. And the last thing in your mouth. Or the make of your first car in the last, yes, it was Dodge Nuts. <laughs> Isn't that we <laughs> convenient? <laughs> hey, I did the non-consensual story of a man and a bus station. <laughs> Dodge, Dodge Nuts. <laughs> Dodge Nuts stars in I'm being held prisoner. I'm a sex slave. <laughs> I'm a sex slave. Sex slave. <laughs> we had uh, Tonto Chestnut. Why are you revisiting <laughs> Chevy know. Big Gulp? <laughs> Tom's iPhone went black yesterday. All the apps and credit cards gone. He said couldn't get his uh, NFL ticket. He was going to a game. <laughs> it was gone. Everything Don't know what gone. happened. Everything was gone. Everything was gone. Contacts, everything, phone numbers? No, everything oh. came back except for the credit cards and the tickets. <laughs> Ooh, somebody stole your Somebody's stuff. Somebody's having a shopping spree. Yeah, right that's oh, right. Man. Uh, Skella Bones is a, a Skella Boner is a, a Halloween <laughs> costume that only guys can wear. You can use your... Uh, that Tom numbers. has promised to wear next week. Uh, you I could have a lady wear that. You could. <laughs> well. Yeah. And this is a world of, what do they call it, fluid, gender fluidity. <laughs> Would you, would you like some fluid on your gender? <laughs> Tom uh, posed the question, why don't we have a sex doll drop like they do for babies at firehouses? <laughs> yeah, so if you have a sex doll and you don't want you want to get rid of it, you don't have to just throw it in the road and have the cops think it's a dead body. Okay. Uh, just go to the firehouse and there's a big drawer. You, you have posited a question that most have called <laughs> unsettling. <laughs> We spend our tax dollars on, on wise things like sex doll sex drops. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you on our YouTube channel. Watch and subscribe.